Right then. Greetings, folks. Let's see how I'm doing. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take a different approach. Like this might be the definition of insanity, but I keep on doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Um, I will plug away with Model V. I believe in it. Um, it's not something I've pulled uh, out of a hat. It is consistent with a lot of other things. So I'm not going for originality. I'm going for uh, what I think is accurate and is supported by other uh, observations such as the the clubs uh, anyway so i'm going to concentrate on one position and that is the differentiated dominant so as you can see i've used uh the Jungian terms dominant auxiliary tertiary and inferior um yeah i think at one point he he called the intertiary the auxiliary the inferior in a later lecture but the thing is the lead function is the most differentiated function. So differentiation is the function equivalent of the whole person individuation. And he actually wrote about parts of a function. I'm like, Carl Jung, elaborate on these, you know, it's a hinting towards subfunctions. So again, this first position valued. It's default, as in INTJ is an introvert, and it's an introverting function. So, let's reframe that. It's an introverting cognitive process. And so, someone who habitually introverts has a preference for introverting. It's easier to access that, pro to access that process because it's part of the default MO, mode of operation, modus operandi. And it's also a club function in that it's one of the four NT functions. Uh, N I T I T E N E, as you can see on the diagram. So you might think, oh, that's it. You're going to stop the video now, Ben. No, I've got a little bit more. So again, we're just doing position one today. So um, I'm going to do a little bit on uh, this function and how. Uh, what we got here? Okay, here we go. They line up there. Actually, not quite, but because they're split. So, if you look there at uh, NIFE and NITE, so what we can say about Kersey's intelligent roles is that they are social plane equivalents of function pairs in the wheelhouse column. This would be the ego row in model A, uh, the top two in MBTI. And so it's a way to see NI. And so with, and socionics calls NI intuition of time. Clarify that it's intuition of development. So with INFJ is developing people, NI with FE, and I would argue a bit of FI in there as well. And with NTs, uh, sorry, with INTJ, the NIT, it's coordinating resources towards long-term strategic objectives. So you've got the coordinating of resources. You can see the TE and the NI there. And so the way the NI is expressed, it's blocked with the TE. So the NI is expressed through, so through those TE actions, you can see a greater plan at work and the way the plan is adjusted um stjs are a bit more ni binary in that they stick quite rigidly to the plan um also david mark kersey once stated that sjs are scheduled whereas rationals plan a little bit difference between the that rigid um, scheduling into the future and then seeing how things are developing and developing along the way but having the strategic objective uh, in mind so that's how NI can come through I can do a bit more on NI in INTJ this needs to be expanded upon now this needs to be because it's based on a socionic definition of SE that is too much towards the assertive subfunction. 
and so it might just not it might not just be say the ni dom is attracted towards assertiveness that might be more the case of <clears throat> infj but what it might be is like some of the stereotypes let's go with the kinds of things that give off a lot of se maybe the musician the ni i mean when i mentioned that to alexis she said oh yes <laughs> so she might have a thing for our, t our, our musicians so those other aspects of se that go beyond the blood and guts the stylish and uh, artistic aspects of se maybe that can come out in the suggestive function or rather suggestible function and so you can see that i'm not going to go over that keep the video short uh until i get onto this and make it longer and so let's intersect a few ideas and i'm going to cover this this and this so in your wheelhouse and that this will also include the auxiliary so we're talking about ni and te in the knit there's a strong correlation between the Jungian types two wheelhouse functions in slots one and two so ni and te in intj i.e in one's wheelhouse and the top two functions best suited to help enact the types cursey predisposed role this is what i went on before about cursey had it as the arranger and this is the arranger of contingencies so in this role i'll describe the role and then you can see how it draws an ni and te so the arranger of contingency is contingencies is thinking about what can go wrong if a goes wrong then we do b if b goes wrong then we do c if c goes wrong then we do D. now that also correlates to the negative critic outlook of the eye of the knit in uh galenka's school of humanitarian socionics and so it's almost like it correlates to the ni minus and so you can see that the person who's thinking about how things are going to develop the contingency planning if this goes wrong we do this that that lines up with ni and shs's idea of ni minus so you can see that together in a plane um so the, the other aspects of ni are harder to see it's something to do with inspiration those other things mentioned in archetypes um perhaps we'd able to understand it if the intj's out there would actually talk about it um <clears throat> so for example Helping that is the Kurz's presupposed role. This is digressing now away from INTJ, but you know, that's me. E.g., the ISFJ is highly concerned with attending to the physical needs, SIH, subfunction, comfort sensing of other people, FE, especially when the other person is physically unwell. In Kurz's temperament model, the accommodated guardian is predisposed to the role of provider protector, e.g., medical doctor, physiotherapist, nurse, carer. Many of many ISFJ resemblers have two in the any don't try so what i'm saying is that role will draw on si and fe the role of the arranger of contingencies draws on ni and te so this is like the social playing correlates the socially intelligent socially useful role of those pairing of functions that is a way to see uh ni ni paired with te wheelhouse functions match the top two in Jung, mbti socionics model a and Dario Nardi's cognitive process assessment. So there's nothing controversial so far in this model, NIT. Then I'm going to mention a bit about the clubs, and then I'm going to mention Burton, and then I'm going to stop. Um, again, uh, now this is where TI is actually quite strong in uh, the knit, but it's how it uses TI, and that would be a separate video. Clubs and club functions. So for the SFs, but you know, skip them. We're on to the NTs. Any -E NITTI. Those are the club functions, and you can see what's there. Default club functions are of the same vertness as the type, e.g., TI and NI in the introverted NT, TI and X, or NI and TI in the introverted NT, NITX. Each type's predisposed Kersey role variant, social role correlates to the first three functions in its model v e.g entp has one ideas subjective thinking and practical thinking three functions which the role of the inventor would draw on most thus entp has the most potential of the 16 types to exercise as an inventor 
setting an example, role of counselor draws on NI, FE, and FI, the big three of INFJ. Strength of slots three and four is consistent with Nadia's research referred to in the Magic Diamond. So that's all about club functions. So some of that's outside the remit of this, but you know, we'll be covering it. I'll cover it again. So this bit is where I'm gonna bang on about introverting. And again, calling it introverting to really emphasize that it's not a thing, it's a process. And as a process that you experience, you can say, right now I am introverting. It might not be a thing, but it's a verb. I am experiencing this subjectively. Or when you are extroverting, you say, okay, I believe that this cognitive process exists as a process because I am experiencing it. Because uh, people might. And so default row. This is something that I've added, the idea of default and situational. Victor Galenka's Model G, I like it, but as with the many things in socionics, it's quite narrow. So, for example, the, the they have the social row functions in Model G. So it's like the, the introverting functions of the INTJ are only used when it's fulfilling its social mission. No or it only uses its extroverted functions when it's on its territory. When it's like, um, uh, say, at close psychological distance. No, sometimes the introvert has to use extroverted functions uh, when, when the situation calls for it. So by default, the preference of the, of the NIT, again, it comes out in the I preference, is to introvert. So what do we mean? And so, there's a bit here. In earlier versions, I called this consciousness, then cognizance, but I realized that FI is more than just being cognizant of FI. It's about how it operates in the individual. In some folks, there might not be much FI to be cognizant of. Also, FI is more than paying attention to someone else's feeling state. So this is turning a, from, this is a, as Van der Hoot would call, a form of adaptation. This is the default operating mode. And NI is an operating mode. It's like when we look at it on a social plane and see NI with TE or NI with FE. Um, so let's do a bit more here. Default operating mode in the introvert is introverting, i.e. Is subjectifying, internalizing. That is what goes along with you if you then go over this. That is definitely the subjectifying aspect of it. And there's different ways to subjectify. So let's go with SI. SI is not as internal as the other introverting functions. However, certain subfunctions of it are, e.g. SI imaginative. Think of beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That's where that subjective aspect is coming in. Sense and sensory imagination and SI harmonizing internal bodily harmony. So there is that tendency of the introverting functions to go inwards and the most inwards is NI. Default, as in default to I prefers. One's experience of the default mode is more nuanced and practiced than one's situational mode. For introverting types, the default operating mode is, you guessed it, introverting. One can introvert without an external stimulus, e.g. whilst reflecting. And one can even introvert, i.e. subjectify an outside stimulus by placing more attention on the subjective reaction to the stimulus rather than the empirical aspect of it. Uh... Me, subjectify and elaborating on Dario Nardi's eight keys to self-leadership. So I'm reframing it, but this what he sort of meant. Introverts, well, I, again, I'm subjectifying it. I'm putting my own spin on it. Introverts are comfortable doing many introverted activities. Uh, Jungian cognitive, foods, cognitive function in slot one, best. Three, well. Five, well enough. And seven, gets by with development. Jung on introversion. So I would say for, think of the INTJ mother who will develop the SI. Uh, Jung on introversion. So again, I added a little bit to this because it's not clear, but I'm gonna try and do like the best explanation of verting out there. Uh, interest not only moves towards the object, sorry, Interest does not move towards the object, but recedes towards the subject. 
Okay, so that what that means is well, I'll go on to explain. Previous Ben is better than present Ben. Introverting, i.e. the state of introversion, means the subject, person, is more interested in its subjective experience than in the object or stimulus or external stimulus. E.g., sound is not an object, but it can hold one's attention outside of oneself. E.g., when someone's talking, it's distracting you from reading. Um, back to you. Everyone whose attitude is introverted thinks, feels, and acts in a way that clearly demonstrates that the subject is the chief factor of motivation. So you see how there, they just put it all together. Thinks, feels, and acts in a way that clearly... So it's like the overall attitude is coming through. Um, that someone who is introverted thinks, feels, and acts in a way that clearly demonstrates that the subject, the subject is the chief factor of motivation, while the object, or stimulus such as sound, my interpolation, at most receives a secondary vote. So you can see here, so without doubt, that what you meant by introverting was subjectifying, subjective. Now, in my opinion, you should have said empirical and subjective. So, getting back to secondary value. Second. Introversion. Now, this is a nice nuance from you. And these kind of nuances like this are typical of INTP, so, you know, a little bit of evidence. Uh, not solid evidence, but I've noticed this with INTPs. They have these little nuances in there, these little distinctions. Introversion is active when the subject wills a certain seclusion in the face of the object. It is passive, so it's like... The INTJ just like blocks everything out willfully. Okay, blocking it out. I am going to go into myself and introvert. It is passive when the subject is unable to restore and maintain interest in the object or stimulus. And interest metaphorically turns away from the object back to the subject person. Now, that is where I clean that up because it's not very clear in the original. So think of the INTJ that's trying to pay attention. But it's like, oh, this is so boring. And it's like against their will, passively moves back into themselves and sort of daydream and will go off. Um, physical color, eye movements, expressions, is that all accessing our eye, sort of zoning out. Um, uh, or maintain interest, again, metaphorically turns away from the object back to the subject. The original quote is quite complex. Um, it's about uh, the turning of libido, but it's better to say that libido is psychic energy correlated and that it's shown the correlate of that is high interest. Um, when introversion is habitual, one speaks of the introverted type. So that's interesting that he's using that as a sort of a diagnostic thing. Um, So you see, would ask Carl Jung, what is an introvert? Well, it's someone who eventually actually acts in an introverted way. Um, he got defensive about this concept of Verta. And he would say, well, there's no such thing as an introvert or an extrovert. But he did say there's definitely introversion and extroversion. So again, he sort of knew it was a verb. And it's like if someone does that verb a lot, then we can classify them as that. Um because it means actions, uh, um, this bit here, the thinks, feels, and acts in a way, telling because it means actions and feelings of, in a TI DOM, will often be subjective introverter, or, case in, type in point, the knit. So, and then here's a little bit extra that shows, just again, the importance of subjectivity in Jung's concept of introverting. Thus, the introverted rational types unquestionably have a reason and judgment only it is a judgment whose leading note is subjective. The laws of logic are not necessarily deflective since its one-sidedness lies in the premise. And this is where socionics people need to listen up. Just because something is internally consistent doesn't mean that it's true or correct. You know, and look up the difference between a sound argument and a valid argument. It's, an argument is only as sound as its premises. That is the difference between the syllogism and the enthymeme, and the enthymeme is a rhetorical syllogism. So the key distinction is that the syllogism is, syllogism is based on premises which are necessary, whereas the enthymeme, which takes the structure of the syllogism, although in rhetoric it's not exactly premise A, premise B, therefore C. 
it's uh but it's some of the premises are sort of suppressed and in the background but it takes that form and it makes it appear more logical than what it is because the premises are only probable rather than necessary i read the book topics on well i read a book on some of the books of topics but that was the key take-home lesson Thus, the introverted rational types in question we have is neither note subjective. The laws of logic are not necessarily deflected since it's one side and this lies in the premise. Now, what that tells me is that Jung is separating the laws of logic from TI. That's one of the things. It is a separate process of thinking. Jung never said there are only two kinds of thinking, extroverted and introverted. Logic is separate because logic is not extroverting it's not empirical it's not about the object and it's not subjective this helps to explain why you can have feeling types that have iqs over 150 especially for logico mathematical problems um there's not as many of them as say for the nts because the because the preferences of nts draw on that kind of intellect and it trains it up it's just like the NF would, in general, their diplomatic intellects would train up their EQ. Um, the laws of logic are not necessarily, since it's one side of this lies in the premise. The premise is the preponderance of the subjective factor existing beneath every conclusion and colouring every judgment. So a TI statement can log be logically valid, internally consistent, as some sense. But I'm going to give another example of how this subjective factor can come in. So, Sherlock Holmes, ISTP, so he looks at these facts outside the window. In this movie, The Green Woman, he shows a woman getting out of a car and... Uh, oh, she must have left home in a, in a state of duress. She is not wearing any driving gloves. A, a, a something omission by... A, so it's that he sees this woman, she sees she's rich, is that she's not wearing driving gloves so he's looking at the facts she's not wearing driving gloves but he jumps to the conclusion that oh she must have left left under some duress because she's not wearing driving gloves so it's like that speculating there but he's going off the sort of the data of it but you can see the um speculation coming in so it's starting with sensory data but you get the speculation there so i think that's consistent with ISTP, whereas an INTP might go from a deduce from a premise, an abstract premise. So, yeah. Right then, that's the end of slot one. Greetings, folks. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that kind of stuff. It helps with the algorithm, apparently. Um, so, these are the slides I'm going to go through. And we're going to add a bit more detail than last time. And I'm going to add a bit what Galenka stated about NI in Model G and more on the Kersey uh, profile. But first of all, I'm going to, so it's this position. And I'm going to describe it. So there's a few things which intersect here in this position that it's uh, an NT uh, an NT function, so it's part of the NT club, and that club corresponds to the strategic insights, which is strategic building. Uh, we've got it's a situational function because it's an extroverting function within an introvert. So, uh, in going over that, so you can see with these colors here that it's two dimensional in my system because it's valued and it's a club function, but it's not a default function. So, if we go to this, I'm just going to go over this again about because it is a wheelhouse function TE in the knit, and meaning in your wheelhouse, TE is in the wheelhouse of the knit, the contender rational. There's a strong correlation between a Jungian type's two wheelhouse functions in slots one and two i.e. in one's wheelhouse, and the top two functions best suited to help enact the type's Kersey predisposed role, e.g. 
the SIFX is highly concerned with attending to the physical needs SIH subfunction comfort sensor. That's harmonizing subfunction. Um, attending to the physical needs of other people, especially when other people, especially when the other person is physically unwell. In cozy temperament model, the accommodator guardian is predisposed to the role of provider protector, e.g. medical doctor, physiotherapist, nurse, career. Uh, many an ISFJ resembler has two in its Enneagram chart. So what we're seeing here is there is a correlation between the Kersey predisposed role and the functions in the wheelhouse column. And so it, you can say that that is a social level correlate of a function pair or function triad if you include um, this position here fishes water so again we're going i'm just going to read a little bit from here because we're going to cover most of this when we do slot four and so and i've covered uh i've not covered that bit before it's just there where you're saying that um the function pairs so the clubs are highly relevant and that's within dario nardi's research this model is mostly consistent with uh, Dario Nardi's research, and his research is consistent with EEG data and Kersey. So, this bit I'd like to mention. An extreme introvert is likely to show better use of counter-club default functions, slot 5 and 7, than a moderate introvert. Conversely, a moderate introvert is likely to show better use of club situation functions, which for an introvert are extroverted than an extreme introvert. That's just a, a sort of a, an assertion by me. Uh, now, we're going to get on to some key information about this position before I then go on about TE. So I'm just going to get rid, and I might crash when I do this. Right, so I'm going to talk about the situational row in the uh in all introverting types and especially in intj so in order to make this more visible um i'll zoom in where i can so the idea here is that the introvert situationally extroverts because by default the introvert introverts um but it's it's like when Dario Nardi, when he gives an EEG to people, he has about like a half an hour or depending on, I don't know how much they've paid, um, an hour's worth of various tasks to perform. And you can imagine that some of those tasks are going to draw on different functions more than others. And you can have, you have corresponding brain activity depending on what the task is. Uh, if it's more, say, logico-mathematical or asking people to imagine things or to see the future or or various. And so you can see there that the task that someone is perform, performing, the challenges from the environment draw on different functions. And so there's going to be certain circumstances which draw on the extroverting functions of the introvert. And so the situational row. Uh, situational operating mode in the introvert is extroverting, i.e. empiricalizing externalizer. And I'll back up that viewpoint about empiricalizer. Alpha Binet. Jung didn't mention Alpha Binet in psychological types. According to um, Anthony Stevens, who himself didn't mention Marie-Louise von Franz when he used her examples um passing the plagiarism book <laughs> maybe or the unattribution book now compared to the personal row in victor galenka's model g the situational row is less specific it can include the personal yeah because the the personal row in model g is just that so it's like the idea that the INTJ would only use its extroverting functions when on its territory. When it's happy to do so. But no, it depends on the situation. 
Um, now that is a useful thought to have. It's just that include the idea of the personal within a larger context. So it's like a subset of the situational. One of the situations could be when the person is on their territory, feeling like they're in their zone, um, such as, uh, say, INTP, they become more effy when on their territory, more expressive. Um, I know it's not expressive now. I know. Um, so, depends if I'm with people. I'm with people I like, then the situation, but part of that situation is uh, personal. Right. But again, there's other situations that join it, and I'll give an example here. Um, it can include the personal, e.g. the TI and X resembler becoming express. I, I should never have said that because it's already on there. There, yeah, a redundancy. E.g. the TNX resembler becoming expressive when talking on its territory, e.g. about an interest, or more open with feelings when talking to someone it has a good relationship with. However, situational includes something the personal does not. The idea that certain situations draw on certain faculties, young and cognitive functions, which are of opposite verten, vertness to the type, e.g. situations which draw on the extroverting functions of the introvert. Where am I going wrong so far? Right, and then this is in conscious orientation. For example, the psychiatrist Vanderhoek, a TINX resembler trained by Jung. Yes, he referred to himself as, via translation, via Laura Horton, an introvert of thinking type with subsidiary intuition. Wrote in Conscious Orientation on page 24 about taking up horse riding again after a long interval. He stated that in order not to be thrown by the horse, his attention was riveted on the totality of my sense experience and my reactions to it. So now I'm going to start calling instincting, sensory instincting to make it a bit clearer. We have one viewer. Will I get a super chat? <laughs> Maybe if it's Alex. Um... So he was in a state of SE, extroverting sensory instincting because of the situation in practice a real person is best described as dynamically alternating between degrees of extroverting and introverting and moving along a vertness spectrum this can be a moment by moment change also a real person resembles rather than is a type hence tinx resembler in my opinion in my in my humble opinion even though a type resembler can do atypical things they tend to do it in a typical way e.g. a by-the-book SITX-like artist, Jung on extroverting. With this concept, I denote a manifest relatedness of subject to object in the sense of a positive movement of subjective interest towards the object. One should speak of active extroversion when deliberately willed and of a passive extroversion when the object compels it, i.e. attracts the interest of the subject of its own accord, even against the latter's intention. Should the state of extroversion become habitual, the extroverted type appears. Now, what I can mention there is, and what I should have worked in, is that I believe the introvert is more likely to do passive extroverting than active extroverting, because that would be an example of, say, the environment drawing the attention of the introvert to take them out of their introverting into extroverting, such as the introvert being disturbed. Um, when the introvert wishes to be left alone. So that's that bit. So now, what do we do? We go on to the next slide. A little bit of structure. So that's a bit about the corresponding roles. And I'm going to elaborate on that. And so these are directive roles, and these are informing roles. And so the directive roles are best enacted by a naturally directive type. NTJs are naturally directive. So the directive types are NJs and STs. We can see why the NJ is directive because of the NI. All the NI wheelhouse types are directive. They have that sort of strategic vision or diplomatic vision. Um, if you see here, these ones are directive. All these NI ones, directive, proactive, Proactive enterprise and reactive inquiry. Proactive enterprise uh, directive. So, the next one. 
And then this is going to be explained, this contending, arranging stuff. So this is a bit on on sub functions. I need to um, elaborate on this a bit more. So when I say like conventional business logic, like I don't want to say that TE is conventional thinking. It, it is with guardians. It, so the thing is, TE is neutral when it comes to utilitarian cooperative because i think ti wants to be utilitarian and doing it its own way which can help to explain why ti is the opposite of fe in that the fe is considering the the feelings and opinions of others and ti is very utilitarian and wanting to do it its own way and so by default ti will do it its own way rather than doing it by the book te approaches they don't care TE approaches just do whatever way works. If it's somebody else's way, they'll they'll use that. TI by default wants to do it its own way first, because it's part of this self-esteem and the the arrogance maybe of TI. Um and the self-esteem of TI. So the NTPs and the SDPs, you see at the whole type level, though that's a, I think by default, if it's a choice between doing it their own way and by the book, they do it their own way. Um so you can i can you can see that on screen i don't need to uh read that out it needs to be elaborated uh a bit more but i would say it seems to see things which are there pragmatic compromises i would say that is harmonizing um normalizing wouldn't work normalizing would just like i put there m See, that's where I've moved it around. That used to be normalizing. And then I looked at that and I thought, hang on a minute, that's just main. So that N shouldn't even be there. Again, so the sub functions are a work in progress. See the video on uh, TE. So, because I've got more to cover rather than go all the way through uh, sub functions. But I believe in sub functions and it helps with certain. Fun now, here is I can go over some of. I, I didn't go over this last time. And so this will go over how. Kersey saw INTJ the way they acted. Now, ostensibly, he didn't do functions. And the reason why, it's more than ostensible, because he was instantly like gestalt, and he was against the element, elementalism of Freud. So, but we can see how he's really is describing the NITX, if we just look at this and see if we consider which functions this intelligent role this social role is drawing on all nts are good at planning operations but mastermind intjs are head and shoulders above the rest in contingency planning and what is called entailment management a contingency plan has if thens in it put there to deal with foreseeable operational errors foreseeable so you're going into the future the key theme of ni and the shortages of personal material. So then you start getting into practical thinking. All sorts of contingencies are bound to arise when any complex project is undertaken, from planning the family invasion in Europe to preparing for the invasion of Europe, as in World War II, and maybe liberation. Uh, such operations involve many, many steps, each of which must be coordinated to follow one another in a necessary progression, each of which can be subject to unforeseen problems. So the intellect, what is... So the person in this role has to get the sequence of steps correct in order to achieve a long-term strategic objective. And it's about, well, if this happens, then we do this. And so it's a lot of thinking about what can happen and how things are developing in the future. And so you have socionics calling NI the intuition of time. But what it really means is a better name for it is the intuition of development. How will things develop? If you think about project development, how long have they been developing the F-35? Or the uh, PACFAR? Um, or the Indians with the Arjun tank and Tejas? So, here we go. Masterminds. Oh, here we go. Uh, each of which is subject to unforeseen problems. Masterminds are able to grasp how each step necessitates or entails the next. 
and to prepare alternatives for or for difficulties that are likely to arise. INTJs never set the course of their current project without a plan A firmly in mind, but they're always prepared to switch to plan B or C or D if they're called for. That is that role. So what Kersey has done here is he has made it solid and we can correlate this to NI and TE. So I, I will call this the social plane of NI correlated with TE. Now, the next one, we're just going to see a bit about Galenka and see the comparisons with that. So I would say noticing contradictions and emissions, that to me, that's not NI. That's thinking and logic. It's not really subjective with the contradictions. Um, uh, here we go. Contemplative wait and see behavior. And we got this intuition of development thing. Um, thinking of the past, remembering past, trying to prevent them from happening again. Extrapolate, looking for signs of the past repeating itself. That's how that operates. That I don't wish to read through that. Uh, skeptical of hasty initiatives. Very careful, waiting for the right moment to act. Has a philosophical to play the out loud generalization, but, uh, but here's the bit. Um, act strategically on the basis of long term goals. This goes to Victor's I little p. Uh, uh, what's that temperament? Uh, associative. Uh, I've forgotten the name of the temperament. The I little P one is the NI and SI DOMS. Oh dear. Yeah, strategically on the basis of long term goals. So we see a, a similarity there. 18 minutes already. How much more have I got? Right. Okay, then we get then we get to what Galenka put about TE. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you the TE stuff, the bits that I have tagged as TE in Kurz's INTJ profile. So uh thorough pragmatists right every idea they will entertain any idea holding promise utility utility did i put utility on that list of functions maybe not maybe because it, it could be related to just st in general utility right uh Fruitful theories are quickly applied, all else discarded. Right. I would say that relates to SI, uh, an anti-SI approach. Here we go. Here's a key bit of TE. They will adopt ideas only if they're useful, which is to say that they work efficiently towards accomplishing well-defined goals. Goals, NI, so you can see the T with the NI. Uh, the confidence again, the T with the SE easily. Uh, ideas seem to carry their own force for them, although they subject every idea to the test of usefulness. Key line to remember about as you can see here, the socionics people reading this should not, in my humble opinion, mistake this for LII. They should not, it's blatantly there if, if they only read carefully. Difficulties are highly stimulating to NTJs, and they love responding to a problem that requires a clear decision. Then here we go here about the application. I should add some things like utility and application to that list. Uh, these lead into occupations where theoretical models can be translated into actuality. Translated into actuality. So we see the TE. They build data and human systems wherever they work. If given the slightest opportunity, they can do, they can be outstanding in scientific research and as executives in business. Practical. Uh, work long and hard and steady in the pursuit of goals. Again, that, that NI. Uh, anything else there in uh, TE? Indispensable in the world of an organization. If they encounter problems of overlapping functions, duplication of effort, inefficient paper, so a waste of human material. They are quick to realign operations to sack people. Uh, cost effectiveness, maybe you could say the FE versus TE. Uh, drive themselves. And then I'm going to 
revisit this profile for other things. So you can see the TE all over this. So now we've got Helgelenko and what he wrote in the TE box. And then we can uh, have a comparison. So frugality. Well, that's also part of the frequently anti J's are fives. Enneagram five fixated rather. And so we've got stinginess with time, effort, and money. Uh, find, so this TE is very much slanted towards business logic. It's even there. Business logic is saving business logic of investments. And so here's the issue with this. This version of TE, TE minus, is based on ESTJ. And so when Victor then writes this, profile is going to write this as ESTJ mode in so he even put they make smaller scale supervisors that's the predisposed role of ESTJ profitable way to sell their old possessions again the Kersey profile is more open than that it's about practicality whereas this is more there's this thing in socialist where it gets narrow uh like offering advice is where putting information there quite over time. Yeah, but that's like the supervisor role because again, it's acting like TE minus, which is the lead function of ESTJ. We're not to we're not to set snap decisions nor yield to blind enthusiasm. Yes, because they're thinking about the consequences. And I can achieve mastery in a pair of somebody kind of jobs. That might be, I would say, that is kind of ST. Uh, although mastery is related to Enneagram Five and NITS are frequently e5 fixated smaller scale scoop drivers and estj mode surprising skill 11 and now brian may looks like newton same hairstyle married a woman with the same hairstyle as well intj a lot phd in astrophysics yeah he hardly ever smiles we've got him pegged right is there anything else no that's it i'm going to stop this now so that's enough for te yeah, I need to work on this, but all the things to do. I cough Wilbur's housemates. Greetings, likers, commenters, subscribers, and hopefully future subscribers, depending on how this video goes for you. So, we're looking at this one here. TI, the third strongest function in the NIT, the Contender Rational. Are there any that would like to disagree with me? So a way of doing it is by saying, are there any INTJs out there who think their FI is stronger than their TI? Or their SI is stronger than their TI? There we go. So now I would say that the INTJ tends to use TI negatively, critically, very good in uh, debate and finding uh, issues with somebody's thinking. You frequently get that in a conversation between an INTJ and an INTP, where the INTJ resembler is able to ask pertinent questions uh, of the INTP, find faults in the uh, model. So, this position modest servant, aka fish's water. And it's called fish's water because the INTJ fish does not know it's wet with TI, just like the INTP fish does not know it's wet with NI. But NI is even harder to feel. Um, next position. Oh, yes. So you can see here from the dimensions. Oh, that bit's done. That it, it is a valued function. No, it's not a valued function. It is an unvalued function, a default function, and a club function. So interestingly, it's like... Position two, the auxiliary, is also a two-dimensional function. So it then becomes, well, but in practice, TE tends to be stronger because preference leads to practice, practice leads to uh, ability. But this, you could argue, is more heavily involved with the NI because if we think about it, in, if we really verb it, the introverting, the INTJ resembler is doing a lot of introverting a lot of subjectifying. Therefore, their thinking is going to be colored by said subjectification. So their thinking is going to have the character of TI. 
only when they're then applying that intellect to the world and thinking about utility and practicality and achieving these long-range strategic objectives only then is their feel is their thinking extroverting and again i'll put, I'll put the ings in there to emphasize these are dynamic cognitive processes uh extroverted and introverted makes it sound like it happened in the past it's misapplying a a, a, a verb into an adjective uh so i'm going to describe this position i'm not going to read through bits that i've already read through again um i'm just gonna like if you want to if you pause the screen you can read this bit about the clubs I've banged on about the clubs. Basically, for the INTJ, the data would show that all the NT functions are strong in the INTJ. That's the actual data from Dario Nardi that an outside party, minor barame, analyzed. And that's at the cognitive processes assessment. That And so the website is keysofrecognition.com. So it's consistent with the data, and it's consistent with Model A, where the strong rows, the ego, and the id, the strong rows. So, uh, and then there's this on verting. Um, basically, the point here is default operating mode. That's what we need to take home from this. Default operating mode. So, default operating mode of the of the INTJ resembler introverting subjectifier you mentioned it it seems towards the subject everyone whose attitude is introverted thinks feels and acts in a way that clearly demonstrates the subject is a chief factor of motivation secondary value right so it's there i don't need to go over that again i, I go over this section a lot in the first video um so Something to mention then is this bit. So this has been covered and this has been covered. So unsung allies growth. Right. And then this position. Credit to Dr. Victor Galenka. 23 appearances on my Ben Raceline YouTube channel, by the way, for emphasizing the importance of slot three. First person to write about the strength of slot three was Dutch psychiatrist J.H. Van der Hoop, taught by Jung. See Conscious Orientation, 1939. Um, I could put the diagram in, but it's quicker just to show it on screen. So I'll show you Van der Hoop's diagram and like how prominent FE was in the ENFP uh, diagram and how prominent NI is. In I'm just going to change this then to that. So this is ENFP. Yay! It focused. And you've got model V there on the right. So you see that you see the size of that area of FE? It's the ENFP. The extroverted feeling type of subsidiary feeling. And the polarity of ST functions. FE. Fish is water. Got the autofocus going on there. Now, hello, Mickey. Are you going to give me a super chat, Mickey? Mickey. <laughs> right. Uh, and then you got ni again look at the area of ni so this is probably the first person van der hoop jh van der hoop probably the first person to sort of recognize the importance of this fish's water position the modest servant and he's got here i don't want to read it through but it gives an idea there of how ni works in intp and then this one will give an idea of how fe works in i'll just get to this comment in a moment that about fe works in enfp maybe if i change the page because then i can keep the same focal focus and then is it there more on fe and enfp and then there this idea of situational and default when in a state of introversion see there situational situational to so sort of converge at the same time my ideas and vanderhoops 
I think the Van der Hoot sort of got me over the finishing line. Right, I'm just going to get back to this comment on screen. You might not be able to see it on... Uh, then you're such a T.I. Dom. As RLI, I could never find the patience to systematize diagram like that. Well, maybe if there was some utility in it, <laughs> you would. <laughs> right. Um, the only way I'm going to get people interested in this is if I um, get my uh, sitcom on our channel and then more people will watch because they'll be interested. Right. Um, but I will plug away. Um First person to write about the strip. Okay, Vanderhoop. On page 424 of Dario Nardi's Magic Diamond, it is stated, or rather the Magic Diamond, that slot four was the fourth highest score in 33% of CP assessments taken. See, kids again. Now, see, the thing is, that slot four was also sometimes slot three. And I think it was also the third highest. And then sometimes I think the tertiary was also third highest. So this is what I mean about it being mostly in line with uh, Dario's data. Because, you know, someone's development will, certain functions will be higher than others. So, for example, think of a female INTP that grew up in the countryside and did a lot of extroverting activities in the countryside and certain upbringing and challenges will develop her SE and make her have, uh, be an INTP resembler with ENTP-like SE. Uh, not that that's that high. Uh, I know folks have taken it more than once. Sometimes slot four is third highest scorers. Third, highest scoring, I had a slot three. Key finding, 96% of subjects had the top three functions from the same club. There, 96% of subjects had the top three functions from the same club. Note on slot four. Um, I'm just going to mention this briefly. Hello, Retro Gamer. He's a, he's a good um, super chatter. <laughs> Retro Gamer 71. Uh, I'll get to that next time, slot four, but I'm going to mention it just now. Uh, Tinite's resembler, working in science, is going to be highly aware of TE, data, scientific method, empiricism, and Karl Popper approach. Falsification aims to eliminate subjects for that. Oh, are you going to, you know, is anyone out there going to challenge me on the fact that INTPs are in science? You know, and therefore they've got to be using TE. You know? Right. So, okay. The type fish doesn't know it's wet with this function. I'll go over these subfunctions. This is not going to be that long a video today. Right, so this good question from Alex. Where do you stand, Ben, on fish in water? Well, fish is water and Jung's archetype with function attitudes. Are we not immersed in archetypal influence? Uh, yeah, you can have questions. Cash for questions, yes, it can be cash for questions. I mean, like a, uh, <laughs> a, a an MP, a corrupt MP, cash for questions. <laughs> Although, in this case, it's not two thousand pounds. Um, so yeah, with the archetypes, I, I don't believe that, um. John Beebe's archetypes, given the wealth of material that is there, and given what was done with archetypes, with um, his model is, let's just say I'm not a fan of the Beeb model. Right. Uh, although, to be fair, I've not read enough about it, but I've heard him talk about it, and I wasn't impressed. Uh, he's also a liar as well. He said Carl Jung wrote one line on the auxiliary function. Yeah, well, there's 27 of those lines, and if you measure them, if you add them all up, it's over three meters. Thank you, Retro. So, uh, there's not that much of TI in a ranger, although maybe if we think about what the what that is, if you're thinking about what's going on, well, if this could happen, that could happen. Well, and if this happens, we then do that. So sometimes the, that third function. So what I'm going to to like bump to show the importance of this position. I'm going to slightly digress outside of INTJ for a moment. So this third slot, right? I'm going to mention what the third function is for all of these types which are good at these roles. So this role of modeler. So that's inventor, right? So ENTP, their third slot function is TE. 
And that role of modeler would draw on any TI and TE. Uh, promoter, ESTP. Um, but they, they, they're good at TE. But the actual role of promoter doesn't, doesn't need TE? Maybe. Uh, but I would say, here, collaborating performer, expressive with emotions. So that role, the role of performer, of show player in English, a thespian, would draw an SE, FI, an FE. Why SE? Because you're immersing yourself in the present context. And it is, and really, SE is extroverting sensual instinctum. Um, and a key thing of acting is being in the moment. When I recently had an audition sent to me by a natural, she's only just done some like student films, but she's really good. It was a really good audition of uh, Wilma. So, but she lives quite a far away. So I'm trying to work her into Wilma's housemates as a sort of a role that's uh, on uh, a video role. A certain character's boss. Right, I don't want to give away too many details. Um, I'll be hopefully posting some scenes soon. Soon, like within the next six months. So, SE. So if you think of supervisor, the ESTJ enforces the rules, enforces standard operating procedure. The drill sergeant. So you can see SE being used there. Fish is water. Um, TI. I always thought about this. How does ISTJ use TI? And I asked somebody about this with a relative, an ISTJ relative, and they think it might be because I suggested it and like, she agreed that um, like it might be improving the system, taking the, the system that, that is like outside of them, not coming up with their own system, but improving the system because they look towards an authority because they're guardian, contender guardian. ESFJ. ESFJ. Right. I'm going to give you an example of ESFJ using SE. The real Rena. Now she posted this on Facebook, and um, she posted this on Facebook in, in a public. So here we go: a message for such and such, and the man in the blue the ute that dumped rubbish out of the front of my townhouse the day after the curbside pickup ended. You should be disgusted with yourselves for dumping multiple medication packs with. Medication is still in them, including Ritalin and contraceptive packets. Young children walk past my house to get home from school, and one child has already picked one of the packets up, bringing it to my attention. Shame on you. In block capitals, there are public shaming, using the SE, like, like very put mumma grizzly mode for ESFJ. Here we go. Council and police have been contacted regarding this matter. These actions endangered many children. Just found out that Chloe lived right next door, which makes you even more disgusting because having lived here, you know that children frequently walk past on their way home from school. Now, this particular individual, um, I went through uh, the Kersey uh, type indicator with it. Yeah, she's a ESFJ. So there's an example of the ESFJ using SE, but it's used as a tool to sort of enforce the conventional morality, the Mumma Grizzly mode. So those are some examples. And then ENFP using FE to do their social justice roaring, <laughs> they're advocating rather. Uh, Councillor role drawing on a bit of FI maybe. Um, so that's some of the examples of, and I would argue composer using SI, um, imaginative subfunction. Um, and the same with the crafter, SI imaginative subfunction, because both of those two types have very high activity in the back of the brain with sort of visuospatial intelligence right so that's just sort of like talking about the importance of that position that third slot so remember i showed you the graphic with van der Hoop, the fe and the nfp and the ni 90p so now for some sub functions of ti right cash for questions okay which is made of archetypal influence in young rather than booze argumentation Social, no, 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 not social instinct. Term. Is sensual, sensuo. Is that what sensio? Sensory, sensory instinct. Force and sensual, which might find its fish is more. 
<laughs> How dare she? Yes. Right. So subjective based. Now I should have this here. Wilter systematization. I don't really see that in STPs. On a tactical level, say with gambling, various gambling systems, but that's more of a NTP thing. Will to systematization. Very much INTP. Even systematize the subfunctions. Logic of uniform structure, I'm right. Well, in the way that it's asserted, but I like to separate logic out from T and TI because it's neither extroverting nor um, subjectifier. Or empiricalizing, or because it's independent of those two viewpoints, you know, there are all other kinds of thinking outside of TNTI, such as perception. Um, reading this book shot by shot has been training up my uh, uh, visual spatial uh, thinking, especially talking about shot progression and which which ones were pro progressive and not progressive because of like different um, forms and like, uh, like, is it progressively like showing different vanishing points with perspective and that lot? Yeah. Uh, integration of theories. I would say, yeah, harmonizing. And I say, we see these things with TI. Um, so this is from the Kersey profile and there's some bits in here that I think we could argue are TI. So ideas to carry their own force of them, although they are subject to every idea to the test of usefulness. Okay, so idea, we can sort of put idea sort of like vaguely if you want to tag it. We might put a tag on there, a TI, and a tag on there of any. Uh, difficulties are highly stimulated. I do who love responding to a problem that requires creative solution. These traits are carried to lead them to occupations where might get a bit more ti in the theoretical models part but then it's being applied into actuality they build data and human systems wherever they work it's that uh can be outstanding scientific executives and bits as that is about as close as i could get to ti in in sort of tagging a sentence in kersey's intj profile like maybe where they're using the theoretical models if they can apply them and if it passed the test of there subject every idea to the test of usefulness so they're overthinking thinking about ideas but the filter is is this useful is this idea useful so it's like these TI things are going to come up. So, okay, so I, I might posit this. INTJ will use TI generally in two ways that we can see easily. One is the ideas and the thinking in their mind, and it's like that will either be sort of discarded or have the idea, oh, that's an interesting notion. If it's useful to apply, then it passes over from TI into TE because thinking about a practical application. And so it's like, it's it's the modest, it's the servant of the TE. The TI is the servant of the TE in INTJ. And then also using TI in, well, they'll come across a theory and the way they critique it. And you've got Galenka's nickname for the INTJ, the ILI is the critic. So in the way they find fault with, so you say you have a conversation between INTJ and INTP. INTJs can hold their own with INTP with the level of TI and issues with and questions about a model or a structure. They don't care to produce their own unless there's utility in it. But they can critique and ask very good questions. So there, it's like it's serving all the mass. It's the modest servant the TI. Um, right, so what's the next one? It's not a long video, this one. Not a long video. So we're going to go through Victor's... Um, oh, not a long video. It's 22 minutes already. So let's go through some of these. Well, we've got how Victor defines... Now, you see, the thing is this. This is sounds like ISTJ. Because he calls LSI Inspector. Logic of Fractal Structure. Now, this, 
yeah, that's how INTPs think. Right, and he even puts there, like, this is the kind of structural logic characteristic of LII. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, though, that's how INTP thinks, but that's not necessarily TI. That that's within the context of their temperament and an intuition as well. So that's definitely how they think. And Vanderhoek wrote will to systematization, but I think that's more STPs. Um, work slowly but conscientiously, paying close attention to detail. Again, when you see the TI plus, this is going to sound like uh, LSI, and so this is going to sound like KBNISTJ. Um, close attention to detail. Okay. Um, the kind of details that TI would pay attention to would be sort of logical details in a logical progression. Because, not because TI is logic, but because TI relies on logic for going from subjective premises to rational elaboration, uh, especially in, N in NT is the way they use TI. Um, tries to calculate possible items in advance while striving to optimize the processes within a system and eliminate all the defects. Calculate the possible outcomes in advance. Right, so again, Vic, the way Victor considers the TI is different from me. I see it as subjective thinking. And he's got here as logic of uniform structure. Uh, now, arguably, I could maybe say that assertive TI is a lot like that. Like, you can get some NTPs that really assert their theory. Um, as like, it's almost like the one true TI, like the one true God. Mind of a programmer. Prone to accumulation analysis of information in various theories of life. Well, this might be because INTJ 5-ish. Well, rather, Enneagram 5 fixated many a time. In the intuitive logical introverts area of expertise, they can be particularly meticulous and even pedantic. Yeah. Debug of organizational systems. It depends how much we think this is TR or how much this is just thinking. Um, I would say this gets to it because you're getting some speculative thinking. Calculate the possible outcomes in advance while trying to optimize the processes within a system and eliminate all the defects. Right. Optimize the processes within the system. Right, going towards TE in the kind of optimization that you want. So, the way INTJ and INTP optimize processes might be different. It's like this different. I'll end this by. Uh, well, yeah, I know. Uh, INTJ has a very strong, or rather, it's got unrestricted FI INTJ, uninhibited FI INTJ. Yeah, yeah, I'll get onto that when I when I cover slot six, the suggestible SE. And like socionics, it's not just about them being like attracted towards assertive SE. There's also the correct. So it's like think of NI doms and musicians, other kinds of. Give the expressions of SE. Um, there's a bit I wanted to mention. Um, about, oh, I've forgotten what I was going to say. Right. Right. Um, I mean, there's a lot of that in this. Okay, there's an example of how INTP uses TI is the way Victor has used it in this system. What he's done is he's defined the functions with the charges. Uh, yes, you have, Mickey. You lose a point. 
Um, uh, you can see here that he's gone off certain assumptions that. So he's going to de he defines these charges based on. He's going to say, well, there's two kinds of TI. There's the way LSI uses TI and the way LIR uses TI. The problem is that LSI probably really is SITX uh, because as a type, it sticks out like a sore thumb in the beta quadra. And it's more different from its mirror. The sensory introverts in socionics have the biggest difference between mirror pairs. That's because frequently they're, they're the wrong way round. And the EEG, EEG data would back that up because all the rational types, the Dario's analysis would show that all the rational types have more activity in FP1 than FP2 for right-handers. Uh, so if you're getting somebody who's uh, typed as uh, TISX, in KBM, and they have more activity in FP1 than FP2, and then in Socionics, they get typed as SLI, well, that's a problem. And then especially when all of the intertype relations line up as well. So, for example, the MBTI ENFPs, or rather, the MBTI ISTPs do not like the ENFPs, and it's not like the ENFPs are really... Uh, BIEs. So there's a whole thing that you can play out in terms of like six lines of argument you can go with that makes me think that socionics has mixed up the sensory introverts. And that's why the sensory introverts don't don't convert over. And it also explains why um one of the DCNH helps to solve that problem. And it also is interesting that DCNH subtypes of the sensory introverts show the greatest variety so for example the dominant subtype of lsi reads like estj and it refers to stalin uh, the normalizing subtype will read like kbn istj the creative subtype reads like istp it even mentions martial arts and car parts and repair and stuff it's like proper Kersey stereotype of ISTP mechanic. And it's like, when you look at those, it's like, how are those subtypes of the same type? <laughs> Completely different types. But this, is, this, but this is the premises. And also another reason why it's the way it is in socionics for LSI is LSI is a process type. Therefore, it really has to be uh, going through the process. But another thing socionics would say is the ENFP is a negativist. Yeah. And the INFJ is a positivist. Well, frequently INFJs are Enneagram 4s, and Enneagram 4s are not so positive. And ENFPs tend to be like the most optimistic and arguably naive of the types. So, at times, not all, but, you know, it's a theme. Um, so the reigning dichotomy is, but you see, the thing is with the reigning dichotomy is there's definitely something to them above um, chance. There definitely is. And when I have actually done some videos testing the reigning dichotomies on people, because if it was just by chance, like it'd be like one out of two times 11 times. And so it'd be highly unlikely to sort of like pass them. But about 50% of people that I did it with went through the reigning dichotomies and got the right answer without knowing what the right answer was. So there is something to the reigning dichotomies, but it's not solid. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, I better stop now. 32 minutes. Um, yeah. I'll try and give you a bit more on the uh, how INTJ uses any in the next episode. Greetings, folks. So, here we go. Uh, please uh, be attentive to these three things here. Here we go. Um, I'm now going to click 
on this. So this is the unvalued situational club function. This one is the valued situational club function. So how INTJ uses any. So in my system, it's one dimensional in that it's a club system, but it's not valued and it's not default. So the reason it's not default is because it's not an introverting function. Um, so backseat driver, and it's within the column unsung allies, AKA growth. Because the reason I believe it's growth is that the person uh, is better able to use the correlated strategic intellect. I'm going to, well, I've already read through this once, but so I'm going to emphasize, because we are talking about slot four. Um, on page 424 of Dario Nardi's book, The Magic Diamond, it is stated that slot four was the fourth highest score in 33% of the cognitive processes assessments, CPA assessments taken. So you keys the cognition.com. I know folks have taken it more than once. Sometimes slot four was the third highest score in I ahead of slot three. Key finding, 96% of subjects had their top three functions from the same club. So they were ESFP their top three functions would be from the SF club, which is SE, SI, FE, FI. Notes on slot four. A 10X resembler working in science is going to be highly aware of TE, data, scientific method, empiricism and Karl Popper approach, falsification and the aim to eliminate the subjective factor. Unsung allies. These can aid the INTJ to develop its strategic building intellect. So as a backseat driver function, it's also a situational function. Now I'm not going to read through this again because I already went through it with the second video, the one on TE. So I'll just leave that there for you to pause and uh, read yourself. And if you're having on a really small device, I'll uh, move it up. And there's an example there. Van Hoop, situationally extroverting, situationally using SE against his default preference. And then here, my view, and then Nguyen, now, I think what, what I should have said about this is that not that the introvert uses passive more than active, but that the introvert uses passive more than the extrovert uses passive. And the extrovert is more likely to use active than the introvert uses active. Because the extrovert by definition is actively using its extroversion from its will because it has that extroverted will whereas for the introvert it's more likely that the extroverting is situational uh, although they do some actively willed extroverting right it's just the amount of degrees and preference I know the social field. Um, so that's that done. And we mentioned the clubs before. Uh, I mentioned them in the uh, the first video. So if you want to take that in, you can pause that. And now, because I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on this bit here. Uh, if I do it like that, it's going to be too small. So what I'm going to do for this 
while I'm talking about this, I'm going to go off screen so that it's easier to see, just to make it a bit bigger. So, uh, I'm going to read through number four. Uh, that, that top bullet point I mentioned last time, I'm now going to concentrate on the stuff in red and the stuff in yellow. Um, this oblong's red text is re really slot four. I have adapted. So let's go to uh, the next bullet point. I have adapted rather than adopted because my view of this slot is very different from Dr. G's when it comes to its efficacy, effectiveness. My key assertion is that the higher the information, my key assertion is that the higher the information one has about a task, about a function related task, the more understanding and know-how one has. This leads to higher task efficiency, i.e. a low effort to effect ratio. For something the type resembler is not overly keen about doing. For comparison, slot eight averse has low information, which I correlate to low potential ability to perform the, the function related task and low internal motivation. And now I'm going to go back to that top bit about adapted. So this oblong's red test is really slot four. I have adapted the idea from Dr. Victor Galenka's Model G that slot four, slot eight in Model G is high in information but low in energy. My, my difference from Victor is the implications of that high information. That high information changes the dynamic in that the higher the information, the less energy is required. It's like when someone is very good at something, they make it look easy. Or just think of yourself. When you're first learning something or after you become proficient at it, and then say a year later or five years later, when performing that same task, how much less mental effort it took because you had more mastery. So what was the difference between near the start and then after those five years? Information. You had more information. And that made the task easier. So you can have a situation where the brake function, the polar function, the Achilles heel, the person could arguably have more energy for, some, for a task related to that function. Uh, this is arguably than say for um now nah, i'm not even sure that's true but but again when it is a task related to so just think about how much effort intj would have to go to in order to do fe well requires a lot of energy whereas for intj to do any they can do any. It's just that a lot of time they ignore it. Again, backseat driver. And if they have any dom in their backseat. Um, so. Then we, then we got, it depends on certain things. And again, um, there's some other factors coming in. Always multiple factors. INTP is the most factorial of the types. We want to try and get all of the factors in to make to get the greatest accuracy, and it makes things more complex by describing all these factors and having to hold all these factors in. But again, it's about the truth rather than coming up with uh, uh, an easy to understand, uh, inaccurate metaphor. Cough, ENTP, cough. I frame this as slot four being high in potential ability but low in internal motivation. MB, external motivation can work wonders. E.g., someone could give you $1,000 of motivation to mow a lawn, but that $1,000 of motivation has less relevance to the average person tasked with scoring 150 on an IQ test to get the cash. In that case, it comes down to ability more than motivation. However, if you were to say it to somebody, 
uh, in a year's time, if you score 10 points higher on an IQ test, I'll give you a million dollars. Then that person who puts all that effort in, because the same questions keep, the same kinds of questions come up in IQ tests. And if that person trained and trained and trained and trained and trained and trained and trained, then I would say the average person would get their IQ up uh, that 10 points. Because, again, it's the same kinds of questions that you get in IQ tests. They're of the same kind. Like, frequently you'll get a probability uh, question. Yeah. The same form. So, there are certain things. Most people do not reach their potential. Um, myself included. Right. Okay, in that case, it comes down to ability more than motivation. Ability is the ally of willpower, to coin a phrase. Yeah, I looked that up. No, no one's used it. Ability is the ally of willpower. I mean, there are certain things, certain tasks, which like, just can't be done. <laughs> like, you know, it's beyond the ability of the person. Um, okay. Reverse. Okay, this is important really important to grasp where well, I put there important dynamic to grasp effort required to complete a task versus, mo versus motivation to spend effort on it e.g. compare these tasks task A is easier but very boring versus task B which is much harder but not as boring Certain types are more self-disciplined than others, e.g. ESTJ more willing to do unvalued TI tasks than ESFP is to do unvalued SI tasks. Uh, unless those SI tasks are related to some kind of instinctual thing, like Jeff talked about um, having to do a lot of logistical SFJ kind of stuff when he was a single parent. So... Um, And then something about the clubs. There's a wrinkle here for the concrete types. I'm going to say a bit more on this dynamic because I think some people have trouble understanding it, that a factor can change another factor and that the two factors inter into interweave with each other. Um, so I know I put it somewhere. I sort of abandoned it because it was quite complex. Uh, so I'm going to look for it because I think now is the time. Um, I was going to talk about it. Is it in here? No, it's not in there. Hold on, folks. What about that one? Could it be in there? No, it's not in there. It was something more complicated. I don't know if I removed it. Uh... Maybe it's in here. Something more more complex. I could actually show you Dario's information because he made this public. Uh, I'll read it out. So what Dario actually said about the um, the data for the, with the club functions. Furthermore, among the top four scoring processes, that is the top half of eight, 96% of subjects, or 125,000 out of 130,000 people, showed a tricycle configuration. Barry May 2017. If we limit ourselves to the top three scoring processes, that number is still 64%. So I'm going to 
as I read that out, I'm going to provide a bit more context by zooming this out a bit. Um, there we go. Um, right. I know this is a little bit complicated. Here we go again. A tricycle configuration means the dominant process leads as the front wheel, while the two processes provide support as back wheels. The study's results support the hypothesis that the supporting wheels are generally one of two orientations relative to the dominant. Either one, an auxiliary function in both attitudes. So you see there, N, I, T, E, and T, X. The auxiliary function in both attitudes, so that's both vertings. Um, or two, an auxiliary function and the opposite attitude of the dominant function. Oh, which function here is the opposite attitude of the dominant function? Any. So the data would show that position four sometimes is number three. Uh, so, or rather, sometimes position four is third highest scorer. Uh, an auxiliary function and the opposite attitude of dominant function. Thus, we might wish to revise the current coding scheme we use to represent personality type patterns. For example, ICJ. It is apparently more accurate to say SITX. Yes. Thank you, Dario. Where TX indicates both T and TI rather than saying SI. Now, folks, if you're out there and you have got, if you're out there, well, if you can hear this, you are out there. If you look in the ebook of the Magic Diamond, Please let me know if Dario credits me in this section. Uh, yeah, because I came up with the TX thing in 2015 because I wanted to sit on the fence because I thought Victor went too far in saying that LII was LT, which would be TINI. I thought, what about the NE? Of the top four processes, the fourth highest scoring process was often 33% of the time, same as the dominant, but in the opposite attitude. So that would be backseat driver. The other two thirds of the time, the picture was rounded out. So here, so, but it's, but we also saw here that sometimes that fourth highest scoring process could score third. So either way, for example, any e and INTJ would be quite high and usually in the top four. Now I think some with some people you can get a tertiary function that's high, but a lot of people tend to overrate their uh tertiary uh so let's try to decipher this the other two thirds of the time the picture was rounded out by the process that's opposite of a support process such as feeling if the person leads with sensing and also prefers thinking right so but i don't think that's going to be say the polar function um so so the type the example they're giving there leads with sensing and also prefers thinking okay so istj and so rather sitx and setx and so it would be the tertiary rarely it was opposite of the dominant Theoretically, it could be the break, but it's not going to be um, in reality. Rarely, it was the opposite. I mean, you know, a lot of ISTJs were great FE, especially when it comes to express effect display. Rarely, it was the opposite of the dominant. Right, that was in the fourth. What would be the opposite of the dominant? Oh, oh, oh so what I mean by there is the inferior. The inferior. Not the opposite attitude, but the opposite function. Rarely it was the opposite of the dominant. So again here, intuiting if sensing is dominant. So it would be rare that, say, SI or SE was fourth in, uh, in INTJ. Right. Thus, what is normally referred to as the inferior process 
almost always lies in the bottom half of the scores. So the, that would be the counter club, the lower four. This suggests that pairs of functions such as sensing thinking, sensing feeling, intuiting thinking, and intuitive feeling are highly relevant. So let's actually decipher this. S, T, S, F, N, T, N, F. So these are the clubs, importance of the clubs. Club is a socionic terms. And then we have this bit, overall the results support Jung's and Meyer's notion of dichotomies, processes in opposition. That is, there's a clear pattern. Whether So what that basically means is, if you have a sense in preference, then intuiting should be in the lower half. If you have a thinking preference, then feeling should be in the lower half. Um, in the counter club. Now we have a bit here. Right, two functions in the top half while their opposites score in the bottom half. And then here we go for ENFJ. For example, if the highest scores are extroverted feeling with support processes, introverted intuiting and extroverted intuiting, then you're describing FENX, FE first, then intuiting. Then the bottom half is usually home to low scores, sensing and thinking. So this is the statistical evidence for the clubs and the arrangement of model v there we go it's in line uh again they vary a little bit they vary somewhat again nurture so for instance you could have an intj that will become uh a counselor i mean carl rove presidential advisor or national security advisor for nixon i keep forgetting his name um hungarian i believe bit of an accent so and there's some more on this right I just, so it, again it's think if you're just learning something and you barely have enough information and it's hard to do well, think of something now. It's easy to do now. That old phrase, it's easy when you know how. But then a few years ago, that same thing would be a lot harder to do. So the idea here is that task A is boring, but you can do it easily. Task B is a little bit less boring, but it's harder to do. So... That information has, has changed the level of energy required. So if you arrange the model in terms of how much energy someone has to spend, then it will make it look like, say, that NE is the weakest function in uh, INTJ. But there's two parts to the equation. There's how much energy someone has to spend on a task versus how much energy the task requires and the my point is that tasks related to the modest servant position require less energy than those required with less effort than those of the binary position because the person has more competence and they can do it more easily when someone's really good at something, they can sometimes say, wow, he, wow, he or she, they, he stroke she makes it look really easy. So that is an important dynamic to grasp. Um, I think I've, uh, I'm going to say something about the clubs and about with the concrete types because it cuts across to Kersey intellects. Wrinkle. Um, I can make that bigger. SF and ST clubs cross Kersey IQs, the intellect, e.g., we can fit it in better with just IQ, e.g., SFs cut across logistical providing and tactical entertaining, providing and entertaining. So, so read the yellow. To guests, ESFJ will feed them provide an act entertainer 
because it's like four other people. Both are still four others. Again, it's entertaining four others, providing four others. Both are still four others. Provide for others and entertain others. And then I think I'm honest by saying that some other examples it's easier to find, harder to find. And ST is cut across the logistical monitoring, supervising, inspecting, and STP tactical expediting. Uh, oh, oh, look at that. I don't have to go even further. How, how far out do I have to go? Um, promoting and crafting. Looking for complementarity, we can see how a mechanic technician, a crafter role, needs to inspect. Linked between supervising procedures and promoting schemes, harder to see. Yeah, so for example, that's one of the things with developing a jet engine that's so hard is finding out what is debugging it, is finding out what the error is. It takes decades, literally decades, to develop a jet engine. It's one of the hardest things to do. Because there's certain places in a jet engine where it's literally hotter than the melting point of the metal. So I riddle that one about how they have to engineer things. There's so many moving parts. Anyway. There's only that not many countries that can build jet engines. Probably fewer than ten. Um... So now we move on to the next one. How many, uh, how long have I spent so far? 27 minutes already. So sub functions. Um, interesting opinion, which I agree with. Any is more than just pattern recognition because it does something once the pattern has been recognized. Yes, especially any DOMs. They're seeking the possibility to realize it. SI with that. And the difference there between SE going after opportunities concrete opportunity and any going after possibilities it's that the tactical is what's nearby the any is more remote si with any in guardians guardians filter for consistency of the present with the past uh, seeing the commonalities creating rules across situations that guardians like connecting ideas situations in a way that can be articulated debated because they're generate when i say the ways that guardians like they're actually not they're not thinking of that at the time the any doms it's just that the guardians tend to like the rule and so you can see sort of like super id any or rather b-side any uh sub functions um i'll just read that bit at the side any and se can both seem opportunistic se will take advantage of opportunities concretely concretely there eg someone's left their wallet or glasses uh heard melon melando it use this phrase actively exploring possibilities when reviewing sub functions video of mine so again world is possibilities to explore to explore actively exploring possibilities then the creative songs and visual thinking that and they can look into different points of view so this is not really a sub functions video uh it needs to be developed so i'm going to go through this and look for so because like holistic profile of of INTJ, Contender Rational. I'm going to look for bits that we could try and tag as any. Uh, when planning, the mastermind is completely open-minded and will entertain any idea. So that the open-minded part and entertaining in any idea, any idea, arguably we could tag that as any, but then it's filtered through the promise of utility. Um... Fruitful theories are quickly applied, all else discarded. Now we could say that the theory is correlated to TI with NE because the NTPs are very good at coming up with theories and, and TI and NE is all our wheelhouse functions. Um, to the INTJ, order is never arbitrary setting con set in concrete but it can be improved this authority based on degrees of credentials titles everything does not impress them nor do slogans or catchwords so this will probably like it unvalued si in uh the knit they will adopt ideas only if they're useful which is to say that they work efficiently towards accomplishing well-defined goals so 
you've got this filter. So when you, so it's like, it's like we look at the actions of the INTJ and it's like they are filtering all of their ideas and they're using the ones that, so it's like we only see their actions. The backseat driver might be coming up with all of these ideas and I'm not going to say that any is ideas, it's just the NTPs have other ideas and NFPs as well. I can do. Um, so we only see the ones that, that the INTJ thinks has utility. So again, it's being, it, and what does Model A call it? The ignoring function. Selectively, it's, it's filtered through TE. T, the TE and the NI. But we can see how it's useful for INTJ. And that is the thing. They will adopt only ideas if they're useful, which is to say if they work efficiently towards accomplishing well-defined goals. So you see there, but the any in INTJ is running through that filter of NI and TE, utility towards these long-term well-defined goals. Uh, if it if it contradicts the plan or it's like they'll just ignore it or sort of float away what my advice to anti jazz would be to write it down put it in a drawer folder come back it might be useful in future uh that's the advice you usually give to comedians if they come up with a joke that doesn't fit the present script write it down save it for a later day um uh, decisions comes easily to them, come easily to them. Uh, settle, drive for completion, long-term consequences, argue and I. Ideas to carry their own force for them, although they subject every idea to the test of usefulness. Like I said, what Model A would say, ignoring any. Um, requires a creative solution. These traits are kind of lead those occupations where theoretical models can be translated into actuality so again theoretical models maybe correlate that to any and ti in that again as i mentioned before they build data in human systems wherever they work if given the slightest opportunity they can be outstanding in so and it's the so this but i would say So they're taking the theoretical model and translating it into actuality rather than coming up with the theoretical model because the INTJ will only come up with a model if the model has utility or if they think there's a book in it. <laughs> yeah, that has the utility of earning money from it. It's going through that filter, that TE filter. Right. Now that's speculative. So what you got to do is you got to ask INTJs, for example, the kinds of ideas they have and the kinds of ideas that they filter out. So, and so this is Victor's NE, and I would argue, what you see here, I call it, no, I called it the hypocritical monitor. In Model G, but again, it's control. But really, it's the monitor. It monitors the surroundings. Um. Again, it's backseat driver. The NI driver is not the NI, the NI and TE, not that. It's not, it depends if they say something relevant. So then this here, manifest in taking chances in defining convention. The thing is, there's two kinds of risks, though. Abstract risks and physical risks. Your INTPs and your INFPs, they can take a lot of creative risks I'm not going to take physical risks se polar se binary averse achilles heel it's not like we see all the nps as the ones that take a lot of physical chances so it's different kinds of risks defying convention yes you can see that with nps there's different kinds of risks the s's like to take physical risks because the physical situation is stimulating for them and they have a different in threat perception uh because it's stimulating rather than fearful the audacity is part of the artisan temperament 
to different kinds of risks. There's a new to that nuance there. I lies, so that's the knit. Intuitive, logical, introvert. Can see. So I think this is a little bit like turning it into a bit of a superpower. I mean, they're not all got this brilliant insight into people. I lies can see instantly what makes a person's tick, that the person, what the person is about, and therefore in which way is the person is likely to behave. <laughs> they're not that good. Um, because they don't instantly see it because they're not able to read the affect display very well because they've not got an interest in it. If the person is not interested in, if the INTJ resemble is not interested in somebody, they're not going to read them very well and they're not going to see what makes them tick. Uh, whereas somebody who is more interested in people and more observant of people and more experienced and can see the patterns would do. Now, of course, you can get these designed TJs that have more development. No intuitive what suggestions and ideas are promising and which are not. So you can see there it's filter. It's filter. Low energy, high information. Likes to follow the cutting edge of whatever they are interested in. Enthusiastically share and discuss the new information. This is the idea of being this position in Model G is sort of like uh, talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk. A good expert who can point out the essence of an issue. ILIs support people around them in developing their full potential. However, they may lack motivation, energy, or self-confidence to do it themselves. Um, I'm not so sure about that. Um... Energy, yes, but they try to spend their energy very well. The INTJ it depends if then if they're they're too negative. The INTJ again, it's it's like the five. It's like stingy with time, money, and energy. I lies may advise others about promising ideas or fields while not willing to take the risk themselves. There we go, and then we got here. You can see this, and again, this is how any works in. ENTP, and they're how any works in EMFP, according to SHS. So is there anything else? No, that is the end. Right then. These videos are getting longer and longer. Right, I'm going to go back here. There I am. Large as life and twice as... I won't finish it. Uh, greetings, folks. I'm just going to wait a moment before starting. So then, today we are doing slot five, which is here. And so if I might get a bit rhetorical about this in the positioning of the five. So if we just look at these introverting functions, how many INTJ resemblers out there would say that their SI is stronger or their TI is weaker. So just out of those four, would you say that your FI is third of your introverting functions? And that you, you use TI but don't value it. Now what can happen with this position is that people can overrate their ability at it, the slot in that position. So the first things first, position five is two-dimensional in my system in that it is a default function because it's an introverting function and by default, the knit, the contender rational introverts. So it's a default function and it's a valued function, but it's a counter club function. So what do I mean by that? Well, the knit is an NT thinking preference and the feeling runs counter to that so it's a counter club function it's part of the sf counter club uh, and it is the strongest out of the counter club uh functions so if i hopefully it doesn't disappear so yes we're looking here and the next graphic should be uh saying something about the dabbling tertiary so instead of going through this again, I'll there because it's a default function. 
And so you can see there what that means in terms of what default means and what you meant by introverting there that basically subjectivity and that he separated uh, the laws of logic from ti but again it's what they do by default subjectifying subjectifying for the introverting mode subjectifying internalizing and if you if you intersect that concept of introverting with with feeling then you get to a definition of fi that is pretty reasonable so I'm going to read out the text. Now, Dublin Tertiary, I think this stuff below it more refers to, yes, the inferior. Yes, the inferior. And so today we're going to be going on about, I'm going to be on about slot five. And that's more slot six. That one down there and slot eight. Right. So it's going to be this because it's a... This column, it's a, a B-side column. The B-side of the personality. Particularly happens when the INTJ gets older, say over 30. Uh, the B-side of the personality are the valued uh, SF functions. S, E, and F, I. So let's see what that means. Oh, I was going to say something about the jewel. Did I put that in? Is that in the folder? I can do that next next time. I can do that next time because it's more about the suggestible uh, function. I'm just going to see if I've put it in there. Um, that's slot 5 FI. Have I put it in slot 6? Right, okay. Really, I should do that now. I don't want to forget to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on screen for you to look at. <laughs> whilst I do it. Um, right, so what do I do here? I open up a new tab. Ben, you should really get on with the video. Uh, yes, I'll try and get back to that and add something to that. Yeah. So do the housekeeping later, so to speak. Uh, Functions in slots 5 are weaker than 1 to 4, yet valued. Better use of these functions is respected in others. They can be a turn-on. Function in slot 6 and function in slot 5 are respectively the dominant and auxiliary function of this type's dual. Complementary opposite. E.g., I'll convert that to the type at hand. The NITX has inferior SE and tertiary FI, and its dual, SEFX, has dominant SE and auxiliary FI, idea imported from Socionics. And then something relevant at the end. Slot 6 and 5 can also be seen as a function map of the Jungian soul image, look up anima stroke animus. This is the other, i.e. B side of the personality. Dr. Dario Nardi, INTJ, has talked about his inner ESFP. So, I'll try and fit that all in. So this font, designed for road signs in Italy, is called Alerta. Slot 5. Dublin Tertiary. Has low endurance, hence the name. Dublin. The type has more short-lived, eyes bigger than its belly, motivation than ability for this function. Overplays its moderate hand. It can come across as someone having pretensions for the function in slot 5, i.e. the person is not as good at this function as it thinks it is. Because the person does not fully commit to the function. It only dabbles in it. Unless there is a non-type factor to encourage its use, especially the requirements of someone's job. So, for example, tertiary... TE in, say, ENFPs, where it's like, whoa, where did that TE come from? Well, someone's upbringing and uh, career, and if their job is interesting enough, 
then yeah, it can uh, develop it. Now, ENFP left to its own devices, maybe an ENFP that was sort of like born into a lot of money may not by default develop their T as much. So this is what I mean. T is one of those functions that tends to get developed by a lot, a lot by necessity. Um, it's very much related to work, TE. Um, yeah, the requirements of someone's job. Victor Galenka, input, beneficiary shift, i.e. a type, by a type, to acting like his beneficiary. E.g., well, let's put in here, N-I-T-X, acting like F-I-N-X. You know, because INTJ can be the most authentic type. Authentic to a fault. Honest to a fault. Uh, and in the end, uh, FINX acting like SIFX upon seeing physical suffering, NITX act, acting like FINX, authentic. Yeah, because the weakest function in the NITX is FE. They care what other people think, they don't care what strangers think, they care what people close to them think. Yeah, anybody else? They give zero Fs. Um, right, so that's the dabbling uh, tertiary. Am I going to go over the subfunctions? Maybe a little bit. Right, and what else can I say about that? Your yeah, eyes are bigger than its belly. So, how does this manifest? I'm going to be doing a uh, video with Enrique. INTJ preferences. Uh, Nits resembler. And how that aspect of FI, where the, I would call it the harmonizing subfunction sort of about the ethics of relations and enjoying a sort of interpersonal bond with somebody. Yeah, they can say they're all about that, right? And they want that sort of, it's, it's like five wing four, like I said, with that four wing, or let's say sexual five wing four, where they want that sort of context and like close psychological distance. But not all the while, like only for a short amount of time. It's like initially it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But once it's like satisfied, it's like done. And that's kind of the theme of the dabbling tertiary. Like I said, though, it, it development is a massive factor. So you could have, say, an ENTP with tertiary SE, but they grow up in an environment where they develop it. Imagine a street kid in Brazil who's naturally ENTP preferences, but they develop that SE. And you probably end up being a little bit more like uh, stereotypically ESTP. Or you might have an ESTP that goes into a line of work where okay yeah, that might work yeah ESCP in finance where they start off with the sort of a tactical day trading approach to um finance but then they sort of listen more to peter schiff and sort of develop their strategy and sort of like learn how to look at patterns and things like that and so you could argue that that then that ESCP resemble is then developing the any and looking for the patterns and interpreting charts and things like that, and just getting more strategic and looking at the fundamentals. So outside of functions, we could say that that's someone who's naturally good at tactics, tactical manipulating, is then um, looking at their strategic building, like more of a strategic kind of long-range thinking. So uh, I know, actually know a couple of ESTP resemblers, know of not personally that actually legitimately listen to uh peter schiff and in fact when uh i can mention his name should i no I won't. <laughs> <laughs> fi veto came in I have not approved of this individual. Right. Um, so, yeah, they can get better. So, development, development, development. 
because of the social field. So now we're going to get on to, yeah, maybe some aspects of this, how, it, how a type might dabble. So again, empathy. Yeah, our INTJ can be empathetic for the people that it's close to. Um, yeah, subjective feelings, authenticity. Uh, but like the main approach to things is rational. Be rational. Uh, again, they will assert things. Their subjective idiosyncratic ethics. I'm right. Being prepared to say it's true, even if it means going against... See, that's, that's the thing. INTJ does not care about going against the social grain. So it's almost like, because the FE is so weak, that their FI does not have to be that strong in order to go against it. Uh, where I would say INFP has strong FE, but their FI is even stronger. Delta and S tend to be consensus oriented. Gamma SS tend to be individualistic, imaginative FI. Art, I think HR Giga could have been INTJ. They seen his photographs. He's got like reduced affect display, and he was like, he was an engineer, and and like a lot of his artwork came from his night terrors. So HR Giga could have been, could have been INTJ preferences. Uh, and then ethics of relations. And again, that for them is like the trick with INTJ, though, is with that FE polar, is getting to know the person behind the harsh exterior. And part of it is because the INTJ doesn't like most people, it doesn't get into, into the habit of being nice. And so when it finds someone it does like, it almost doesn't know how to be nice. So this is extreme cases, but like, again, it's like practice and that sort of thing. Um, and like, and like I said, with INTJ, it's going to be finding the right person. Like with a lot of introverts, especially the, the IT types, those with the introverting and thinking preference. Yeah. Difficult. 14 minutes. Uh, right, so I'm going to go for this Kersey profile. I'm going to look for bits that relate to FI, that I will tag as FI. Okay, driving themselves hard in school. Nah, not really yet, but it's what it, where it leads on to. Ah, relationships. That's why this is in here. Tendency of people to feel transparent, even incompetent in their presence, often results in working relationships, which have some psychological distance. And then this is about the weak FE, but then the strong FI. So I'll be covering uh, the weak FE when we get to slot eight. Colleagues may describe INTJs as unemotional and at times cold and dispassionate, reduced affect display. This is a key feature of FE polar. You also see an ISTJ. When in truth, they are merely taking the goals of the institution seriously and continually striving to achieve those goals. Fortunately, indifference or criticism from their fellow workers does not particularly bother the masterminds. Yes, because they're FE polar. If they believe if what they believe, if they believe that they are right, beliefs, conviction, FI related, or in all they make they did loyal employees, loyal, we tend to put that under FI. Why? Because the ESTPs and the NTPs tend not to be loyal, and their weakest function is FI. Loyalties are directed towards the system rather than towards individuals in the system. Yes. So that was that's more about SE. Now this is where we get towards the FI in the uh, this bit here. Again, emotions are hard to read. FE polar. N not. Not be emotionally expressive. Right. But here we go. For all that, however, masterminds are deeply emotional, even romantic types. So this is the FI inside that harsh FE exterior. Sometimes harsh. Stereotypically harsh. More males than the females. And once they have decided a person is worthy of them, 
they make a passionate and loyal mates, almost hypersensitive to signals of rejection from their loved ones. So you see there that that wanting of that close psychological distance. It's almost as if like Kersey is describing like a sexual five here. So you can see like I'm tagging this as FI stuff. And then this this reduced affect display and not really caring and not showing much emotion to others, I'm tagging as FE break. And again here, loyalty, independence of action and attitude in the offspring. I tag that as FI. Um again, security of a good relationship. Yeah, because it's hard for them to find people that are like them. Well, I reckon they're like one percent of the population. Um maybe he's going to the place where not pestered, also there's lots of drama. Yeah, they don't like drama. We'll do a lot for old friends. You see, what you got here with Victor is like you see, I know how his system works. What's FI plus? FI plus is keeping others at a distance, being a suspicion. No, 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 no. Forgiving people, giving them the benefit of the doubt, grieving and comforting those struck by grief, being kind to others. So, he thinks, so when he comes to write this box, oh, in this box, it's going to read like INFP because it's FI minus and FI minus in Victor's system is how FI works in uh, INFP. Now, this can be true, but they're not going to go out of the way. They're fives. A lot of times, INTJs are fives. So what I'm sort of saying here is this sort of text, this is a deductive artifact from saying it's FI+, plus because that's your definition of FI+. Plus. If you're going with that definition of FI+, plus, and then you come into this slot, then that's the kind of sentence that you're going to write in the box, because that's how he's defined FI+. Plus. So, again, so you see what I mean? Like, close company of friends and relationships. Yes, if they have them, <laughs> I can imagine it. Yes, those who are close to. It usually do that, but doesn't it make the INTJ look really nice? Very helpful, very caring. They can be like that. Their love of peace. Sears one towards tolerance and away from drastic solutions. Do you see what I mean? It makes it sound like INFP. Again, FI plus is deductive thinker. Uh, from the premise that FI plus acts like the way FI works in INFP. That's the premise. Even It's even in there. That's the ethic of EII. Right. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, that's the beginning. So uh, might as well stop there. Keep it uh, short and sweet. There we go. Greetings, folks. So today we're going to go through suggestible inferior. This slot. Slot six in model V here so this is a counter club function so why is sf the counter club because sf is the opposite of nt and that's the club of um it's the temperament also of the intj preferences person the introvert and intuitive type with subsidiary thinker the the knit nitx the contender rational or in english it sounds better right wisely rational so dichotomies so what slot six has going for it is that it's valued but it's not default because it's not an introverting function within the introverts and it's not it's not what it's not part of the the NT club, the NT strategic intellect. So it's quite far away. So sometimes, like, it sort, it sort of depends on development and sort of like what is weaker, six or seven. You could argue that seven is stronger because it's a, a, a default function, 
but it's not valued and it's not part of the club. And you can argue that six is stronger because it's valued. So it depends on the person where it's like, the, does the environment shape the tertiary function more? So like, say, an INTJ parent, typically female, might be more likely to develop SI than SE. Maybe INTJ male, a bit more testosterone if they're not in, say, don't become a parent. Maybe it's not drawing on SI. Maybe they get more into SE. These are just like statistical stuff. Um, just sort of like typical gender roles might draw more on SI um, with the uh, INTJ female versus uh, INTJ. Because, you know, like testosterone is a thing with like and its association with sort of risk taking behavior, you know, and like. Uh, let's look at the demographics of prisons. It's like 90% men. Uh, so uh, hormones are a factor. And hormones are bound up with instinct. Introverted instinct, subjective instinct, and empirical instinct. So just some observations there. Um, so just life might develop the role more or someone might choose to develop the inferior more, such as Dario. Dario Nardi has actively worked on developing his SE, and he, like, he writes glowingly about SE. Um, so all things being equal, left to their own devices, INTJ will probably develop SE more than SI. Because also SI is bound up with, the, with stabilizing and the guardian temperament and... Um, INTJ is very much against that sort of like status quo stabilizing a situation. It's like they're going more towards no develop it, but it might get a bit more certain, might get a bit more into that. Anyway, so that'll be next, going over the contrarian alternative, the SI. So contrarian alternative is also, I found out about this in hindsight, well, after the fact that uh, it's also a, a term in finance for putting on a trade, the contrarian alternative. Um, and they can work together. Yeah, and Dario said that, so basically, all of the irrational functions can work together with the dominant in uh, an INTJ. Or in other words, positions 1, 4, 7, and 6 can work, uh, or in other words, positions 4, or in other words, the functions in positions 4, 6, and 7 can work with the function in slot 1. And I've done a video about that how they go together it should be it's in the after socionics playlist i believe something about how to bring your lead function into balance what i'll do is i'll post it in the uh it doesn't support comments in private windows oh dear right then um so i'll move on to the next slide five minutes on waffle so i'm not going to go over this you can read that but um, in summary, there's like there's different socionics concentrates too much on SE, the aggressive kind of SE, but it's also the adaptability part of SE. So if you think about artisans, think of the SE dom. It's not just what are the sort of step, what do we notice at the whole type level about the SE doms? What the SE dom is best at? It's not just the aggression and the sort of the, the stuff that makes them good warriors, but it's also the coolness under pressure. And so I suppose an SE dom is the most likely to be cool. And that cool is against the sort of the force and sorics and would be maybe more like the harmonizing kind of SE, the ability to adapt to circumstances, be cool under pressure. So, and then there's also the resourceful part of SE. Now, this is going to draw on other functions, like SE with thinking or SE with feeling, and typical certain cursey roles will draw on different function combinations. So, for example, performing, acting in the moment, you've got the instinct, uh, the empirical instinct of SE, you're going to draw on all of those SF functions. 
of creative and imaginative functions as of those SF functions to like enact that role of the show player, aka thespian. Um, but in the main, you've got with SE this empirical instinct thing. You're really directing your attention outwards. It's like doubly outwards because instincting is related to the concrete and it's extroverted. So I don't say extroverted because it's like you turned a past tense verb into an adjective. It's a, it's a process, it's an ongoing process in the moment. So it's extraverting, instincting. You're actively putting your attention outside. So it's like Van der Hoop saying when he took up again horse riding after a long period, he had to concentrate on the totality of his sense experience. So he was in that process of extroverting his instinct because it's it's his senses and his emotional reaction there too in the moment i can give you an example of this the artisan is not just taking in the in the senses there's an emotional reaction to those senses the thrill of being in the moment the seeking of the, of the excitement and so the reaction to the sensory input is bound up with it and it's experienced as a unity. And also within that unity, there's certain urges to act in certain ways, sort of instinctual reactions. And this is why Van der Hoop framed it as instinct. And I call it instincting to make it, to make it in line with all the other functions. And Dario changed intuition to intuiting. So this is why I break down instincting into seek, um, using those things from Van Hope. So he's got sensation, emotional reactions there too, a sort of an impulse towards a certain kind of action and a kind of knowing associated with those emphases in the field of sensations, Van Der Hoop phrased it. So, so we've got that. And so understand SE, read the chapter on, on Kurz's art, artisans. So what do they want? It's value being excited. Seeking stimulation, uh, the self-image of the SE dog, artistry, audacity, adaptability, and the INTJ resembler is going to be suggestible for that. Admire those qualities in other people. The artistry, the audacity, the adaptability, um, those traits, and those traits are weak in INTJ because it's thinking of consequences, because or has a, an intuition of consequences. Which is another in the sort of like intuition of development, intuition of consequences, and they don't have the energy and sort of that see that that free. And so the SE that they're kind of attracted to is the kind of the free spirit kind of SE of ESFP versus the confidence assertive SE that INFJ finds attractive in ESTP. So it's the free spirit kind of stylish kind of cool. Uh, Yes, and what you would see at the whole type level with the ESFP. It's a different kind of SE that they're attracted to. Uh, and then in Victor's system, uh, humanitarian, so it's, that would come across as the difference in charges because uh, like right spinner versus left spinner, INTJ being a right spinner being more attracted towards SE+, plus, which is more of a kind of a informing kind of se and se minus is more of a directive kind of se associated with the in charge uh, estp i know i'm mi mixing systems but deal with it learn the systems <laughs> they're good systems it's like here's the imbalance um right um so now i've got to talk about the right slots so um it's not five i'm on slot six but i'll re go over this again so it's this is the column hot four b side the b side of the intj the inner esfp and dario has mentioned that as a phrase he's talked about his inner esfp so and then i'm going to get to what jung wrote about um the soul image which i sort of use that as a some people have written that it's not quite the same thing as the animus stroke animus, but I'm going to use a shorthand. I'm going to say the soul image. 
So slots, slots, functions in slots five and six are weaker than one to four yet valued. Better use of these functions is respected in others. They can be a turn on, especially SE in INTJ, but it's the kind of the cool, sky, stylish, calm under pressure kind of SE that ESFP is more likely to be. In fact, there's a way to show how INTJ is turned on by SE by listening to this and how Dario describes it. So, where, let's have a look. I'll try and find the right page. I didn't plan for this, so hopefully I get there at the right point. Uh, Dario being turned on. Right, is that? The introverted intuitive can find wholeness by accepting extroverting, extroverted sensing into his or her life. Right, dynamic tension of opposites. Right, I'm going to try and find that bit on... Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Now, this sounds like a love letter to Essie in a night. So this is Dario Nardi. So this is where... This is your... This is it. This is the real deal. So, cooperative relationships. Right. Okay, so... So, extroverted sensing with FI. But listen to the words he uses. Notice opportunities for action and decide if something is significant and worth the effort. Okay, so now we get on to this bit. Uh, cooperation yields many qualities. For example, when we look at extroverted sensing with introverted feeling as preferred processes, we see a richer pattern. So the way he writes about this, it's like he's a love-struck teenager talking about SE with FI. A person flows with a sense of pace, rhythm, and process, with quick and easy responses to stimulate to situations, and often has personal style. He or she is a hands-on experiential learner and is good at asking questions, offering suggestions, presenting ideas, creating products, and making helpful comments. This person notices and gets in sync with nonverbal information and shows spontaneous and genuine expression. Each of these qualities reflects an awareness of personal identity and what's important to oneself and for others in an immediately relevant, tangible and helpful way. It's the most glowing part of the book. And also in this book, his gamma functions, he's more glowing about them than the other ones. So N I T E F E F I and S E. You can really tell that Dario values those four. So I'll just mind that to those people who don't type Dario as a gamma. So, and also like when he talks about F E, he talks about the benefits of it in terms of T E. Oh, it's good for business. Well, that's in terms of a different function. Uh, although F E can be involved in business, there's a business customers always right. Uh, but is that done for F E reasons or T E reasons? Well, that customer's wrong, but he's always right. That's the policy. Uh, or she. There can be a turn on. There can be a turn on. The function in slot six and the function in slot five are respectively the dominant and auxiliary function of this type's dual. SEFI, ESFP. Collaborator Guardian. The extrovert of instinctive type with subsidiary feline. Complementary opposite. Uh... Uh, Tin X has inferior FE and social SI and it's dual. ESFJ has dominant FE and it's really an idea important for socialics. Slot six and five can also be seen as a function map with the Jungian soul image. Look up anima animus. This is the other eye, B side of the personality. Right. So the slides, I'll get to those in a moment. Or will I do it right now? Right. Uh. I'm going to do it right now, and I need to remember to get back to this. I need to get back to that. So I'm going to do it now, because I mentioned the anima and the animus. Right there. This book. Uh, so, the soul image. Now, this book gets a little bit controversial. Uh, it was written by a woman, but it's astrological. 
So you see, the thing is, this is going to vary based on the type. Like, so like the kind of woman inside an INFJ male would theoretically very be, be like the assertive because it's going to be the inner ESTP. Uh, the soul image. Right. It is, yeah, you can also get a distorted impression based on this. So, for example, this is going to vary by type. When it's give examples of what the animal is like. Um, so, so, the male's soul images appeared in many dreams. Eros, Ogotovic, represent images. It depends on the type. Like I said, the soul image of an NI dom is going to be more assertive. It's going to be that SE. It's going to be the SE anima rather than this kind of anima that's more feminine, which would maybe more like you might see like in TE dom. So I would, I would even argue that the animus of the TE dom female would be maybe a little bit more like fi dom the sort of like enneagram type four fixated type person so it's going to vary by type rather than it being sort of like gender rolled as much as this um and then this is controversial identifying completely with the anima can lead to effeminate homosexuality or transvestism controversial uh so, and then we have the animus. Again, here, the woman's soul image takes the nature of reason. No, it doesn't. If it's an INTP female, it's not going to be that. It would be feeling. The animus would be feeling. This is getting this is as if all women are feelers. Um, and again, this is just like trends. It depends on the type. It's going to be the other side. It's going to be the B side of the personality now this is i think a drawing of margaret thatcher who entj so an extrovert of thinking type with subsidiary intuiting uh initiative rational right wisely so it's a bit sexist in sort of stating that so for instance here so if the woman is assertive and ENTJ-ish, it's sort of saying like, oh, she's pathologized because she's got too much of the animus in command. So that's a little bit sexist because it's stating that that like an ENTJ female is not a proper female, that it's an animus dominated female. Um so this is a bit more in line with how i would see it where you've got again so it's like this is very like black and white the male has a feely anima the female has a thinky animus but here you can see here it's different so it's like she's contradicted herself so if we go here you can see here the thinking persona has a feely soul image so again this would be banned me intuitive persona is the sensation soul image so this would be under int the any and ni doms again here the opposite so here we go a thinking type man cut him off cut off from the realm of feeling may dream of mermaids or he may project his unconscious undifferentiated feeling function onto a feeling type female with whom he falls in love by embracing her, he's indirectly embraces his own thing. It's less different. I would say these days it's less differentiated, less nuanced than a dominant FE. Uh, it's more basic. His projection would be George when he falls in love as we go through that. That's that's a fair model. Yeah, Dario loves SE. As I've gone through there. And he's described it as aspiration himself. So now we'll go back to this. So that's about the soul image. And you have to maybe sort of like take the take Yoon's concept and update it with knowledge of uh, typology and think of eight different kinds of soul image or maybe 16 different kinds of soul image because it's the inner type the jewel so uh, in order to make this a little bit better bigger i'm going to disappear for a moment so 
Darian Ardy's cognitive processes assessment found at keysignition.com showed the inferior function was almost always in the bottom half of the scores. Functions in slots six and eight are opposite invertness from default row and are part of the council club functions. Their weakness is unsurprising. That's those two, uh, six and eight. It's that, that lower corner. I know my right from my left. There's just no need to say it. Um, we got here right uh think of suggestible in now this is where we got that's this of of serverland and jarvik think of suggestible in harvest of kairos think of suggestible inferior se extroverted instinct and tells in women ni don resemblers they tend to be attracted towards manly men tendency for those women to dress in a post-feminist way see blake seven episode the harvest of kairos for enunciate serverland Jarvik duality. Okay, I'm going to give a, a bit of what happened in that. So, Jarvik says to Serverland, when was the last time you weeped at the death of a friend or lay in the sun or lay in the sun naked with the sun on your back? And it's like all of these sort of like examples of sensing and feeling and then, and she's like INTJ, and he says to her, when was the last time you feel, you felt? And he throws a sort of an object into the screen and destroys it. So it's like very much you can see that Jarvik is sort of like living and sensing and feeling. And it's like, oh, this means nothing to you. When was the last time you felt? And so there, and you can see there that, in the duality is like she needs him to like develop that sf side in her and there you've got the roles reversed where you've got the male with the with the female characteristics that is sf typically you know associate those sf and she is like intj contender rational um and then there was a bit at the end of the scene it was like now as to that that degrading Act you submitted me to on the bridge. I would like you to do it again. Yeah, she he grabbed her and kissed her. These days lawsuits. Right. Um take him to the punishment cells. Right. Below is about Auntie J Vanderhoop integrating inferior FE into himself. Right, here we go. In conscious orientation, 1939, J. H. Vanderhoop wrote a polarity. Counterclubbing model V can be integrated into the personality, e.g., for Vanderhoop's own type, Tin X. The introvert, I think, a type of subsidiary, the subsidiary intuition, Vanderhoop's. But where there is greater freedom in thought, we get a morality founded on principles and reason. A libertarianism, an Austrian school of economics, uh, of um, Austro libertarianism, capable of giving fresh insight into the life of feeling. The effect of polarity in me gives, gives rise to an interest in feeling in its relation to instincts, me, sensation. But I lay more emphasis on the feeling life as a sphere to itself and on the significance of morality. Uh, and then the function in slot A, I'll get over to. That's another uh, event because we're doing slot six. So now for what Kersey... What in the Kersey profile we could tag as suggestible SE? Right, so there's a bit here about a mate. There was, this, or was that in the next one? So what did I tag as SE? Right, there's something there. Masterminds tend to be much more self-confident than other rationals, having usually developed a very strong will. Yeah, so this you might argue me in SHS, you might say this is like, that's, um, school of humanitarian sociology, you might say it's like dominant subtype. Uh, so it's like definitely SE value one, this profile. Now it gets more to the suggestible SE uh, here when it's about something about their personality. There. 
Masterminds want harmony and order in the home, uh, but not at the cost of having a submissive mate. They, they don't want a submissive mate. So that doesn't necessarily mean opposite from that assertive mate, but from a socionic point of view, we might say that. So that's suggestible essay. The most independent of all the types, INTJ, want their mates to be independent as well, able to stand up to the, to the sometimes formidable strength of their personality. So that is consistent with the suggestible essay, with the INTJ being attracted towards ESFP. Um, yeah, and then this is all stuff that goes towards, we'll get that when we get to position eight, the FE break stuff. All the stuff about not showing a lot of emotion and all of that. Right. And then with the we've done it with the FI. Now we get on to this. So this is going to be the final part. We're going to go through this and sort of like see how this relates to KBN. Could call it KBNV. Cozy Baron's naughty. Right. So let's have a look at these definitions. So Victor has based his definition on the whole type level. So S E plus is it's like Victor has observed ESFP, SEE, sensory ethical extroverts, and you've got sensory logical extrovert. And so it's like this kind of SE. And you can see SE plus is like the informing kind of SE because SFP is an informer. Non compliance, non compliance, that's like rebellion, audacity, artisan. Already it sounded artisan. Forming alliances against a stronger enemy, being assertive about their demands and protecting their interests, such as ESFP. And but again, the non-compliance, the rebelliousness, and then for the subordination, having them depend on you, building a hierarchy. Leads, so ESTP and Kersey, Kersey Barons, in charge interaction style, an initiator. So that is consistent. There's a consistency there. So we're going to get to this. So, oh, what we got here? Responsible for stimulation, aggression, build up and release. So let's think about that. Instinct. If it's just if it's just sensation, then why is aggression in there? Aggression is in there because what's aggression? It's an emotion. So it's going to be bound up. So you see there, this is already the emotion is bound up with the sensation. So he's, he has seen, again, instinct is a better word for it than just sensation. Sensation is too narrow. I mean, they're even calling it forced and So let's have a look at this and look for instinct. Um, when meeting direct force, allies may yield at first. However, over time, over time, yeah, this is the thing with, with this column, like over time they get better at it uh, as they develop that B side. However, over time they acquire confidence, learn the game and become capable of using force themselves. And so crazy sort of saw INTJ as sort of having a little bit more confidence, maybe in certain areas, but again, intellectual area, I would say. Intellectually, INTJs are very confident. Uh, within their close circle, they're not afraid of confrontation. So as a contender, chart the course interaction style, contending, directive, that's consistent with Kersey. Their laid back, almost lethargic disposition can suddenly turn into violent resistance. Yes, this is kind of like the binary with the FE and their emotions. It's like all or nothing. It's not finely grained like an FE dom. They can sort of dial up and down the, their affect display. Can seize the moment by noticing and pointing to use resources made available by the circumstances. Well, it's interesting there that he's got that adaptability part of SE in there that we notice in SE DOMs. I mean, that's that very much that tactical intellect. Seize the moment. Available resources in the present circumstances. That is very tactical intellect and very consistent with the artisan temperament. So this is what I mean about the socionic intuitive types are consistent with the Kersey intuitive types. So it's like they are describing the same eight kinds of people. Um, and the systems are capturing that. The problem is with the sensing types, especially the sensory introverts. There's a little bit difference in emphasis with the uh, sensory extroverts. Around them, I and I usually gather a group of people of widely differing professions and often in incompatible views, thus building a system of checks and balances. Well, the reason why that's in there is Victor is thinking deductively because he's based his definition of SE on how he sees ESFP using it. 
And because ESFP is known as the politician, therefore you're going to write a bit that sounds like that on a smaller scale. Very deductive thinker. He's deducting from this premise. Thus building a system of checks and balances. I can sort of see that out of their negativity. Um, again, that, that sounds like, again, the way you define SE plus in terms of this is the function of ESFP and I've got them as the politician, building alliances against a strong enemy, gathering people, different you know, compatible views, building a section. Again, it's like that's come from that deductive thinker. So that is SE. That is suggestible SE in the NIT, the INTJ. And next will be the contrarian alternative. I now end this event. Oops. Greetings, folks. So, part seven of this epic. So, today we're looking at slot seven and using these dichotomies. Uh, the only thing it has going for it is that it's default. And that's important. Uh, if the person, so for example, um, and Dario Nardi's research that the introvert does a lot of uh, introverting activities overall, particularly basic ones, because it is because they're in that default state of introverting. Um, this slot is so. When I was talking about model G, I would talk a lot about the role function. The role position that's and this can improve a lot because of development um i think i mentioned last time i sort of speculated on how um societal expectations and social roles might lead to uh, maybe some differences in development between male and female intj resemblers and so what I can sort of say is like, say a different situation. So, say we got a male or female INTJ single parent. That role is going to draw on SI. When there might be people out there, anyway, it depends how you define it then. Well, certain facets or subfunctions of SI. And so let's look at those. And so, yeah, the contrarian alternative, I came up with that. And then I wanted to check it had been used elsewhere. And it's used in finance. But like, I've been listening to Peter Schiff since 2009. And he never used the term contrarian alternative. But it's like, you know, it's, it's like coming from the idea that the overall mindset of the NIT is introverted and irrational now it's not what it looks like on the outside but internally that could be the experience so i've asked uh, hayley harbour about this and she has uh sort of developed this sort of like si imaginative um no something that she said in interestingly that she would think non-verbally thinking not in words whereas to me most of my thoughts are in words so that could maybe go a little bit towards the irrationality so so it's very speculative very speculative of course you intj resemblers out there don't like to talk about it much um that internal state um so again subjective instinct yeah and this is and the reason why this function is not going to be used a lot in intj resemblers is that a large part of si is stabilizing and that instinct to have it routine orthodoxy so and intjs aren't being about 
being orthodox. So maybe sometimes over time they learn to, okay, let's just stabilize. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, rather than the rationalist attitude of trying to improve something. Now, they're not going to be like the NTPs, which will be like improving a system for improving the system's sake, or rather to make it more their system. To like to put their mark on it, whereas always that filter there with INTJ of to improve it uh, a lot uh, according to a metric of actual utility. <laughs> but it improved efficiently in that the improvement is worth it. It's like as a cost benefit analysis filter of the INTJ sort of running through in the background. So they're not going to be improving things for improving things sake the way NTPs can. Um, so um, let's get the bar at the bottom. Uh, so these aspects of SI. Um, there's other things you can see there. So again, stuff. So if you think of SI as essentially it's. I mean, Van der Hoek nailed it. I, I, I could put it in the little quotes about the conservative farmer who takes care of his animals and does the same things in the same old ways. And it really was quite annoying that it appears that David Kersey Sr. never read Van der Hoek. Even though it's mentioned 10 times in Gifts Different that MBTI book that sold quite a bit. So it must have just been a hard book to get hold of. Um, and then SI imaginative. So I sort of see it like this. Core of SI is the guardian instinct. What does Dario call his SI chapter in, it, in the Magic Diamond? Cautious protecting. That is getting towards the, the instinct of SI. Uh, the conserving instinct stability stabilizing uh and it's that stabilizing which is the opposite of ni so here's a little bit of ti for you so most people in the mbti community will agree that ni is about development and that there's a temporal aspect to ni in terms of intuiting what is going to happen and because we like these functions that the opposite functions to actually be opposite then we can say development versus stability and we can say on the whole type of level what do guardians do they stabilize the situation and do things in the same old way if it ain't broke don't fix it and i about development ntj is developing objects uh projects uh nfjs developing people uh counselor role educator role um mentor role, cult leader role, if you want to get an unhealthy version. Um, now, what do they call it? The NFJ might say, I prefer community leader. I prefer influencer. Um, and then, so the imaginative of SI that you get in Jung that he banged on about with the artist. Now, you, usually, uh, ISFP, they've got strong, unvalued SI, but it got, lines up with their temperament. You can get quite a few creative ISFJs, but they don't do it as a career because it's not safe. So you've got to look for hobbies and that. Uh, harmonizing this, that's the stuff with health, protecting. So you've got your main three features of SI in there. The stabilizing, like the guardian temperament stuff, the subjective sensing stuff that Charles Jung banged on about, and then the comfort sensing that Socionics bangs on about. Those three sort of like sub-functions, well, two of them sub-functions in the main part of SI. So all part of that instinct, subjective instinct. Now we get on to this. So I've got to work out what to read. So I think that is related to... Yeah, slot eight, the function in slot eight, right? That's for the next one. So we're looking at um, slot five, 
So mainly it's this one. Right. Can train on, right. Can synergize with dominance. Yes. So I did a video where basically all of the, so for the INTJ, the NIT, the introverts of intuitive type with subsidiary thinker can integrate all of the irrational functions into the dominance. Right, okay. So this is going to focus on this. Functions in this column are least valued, are the least valued. Function in slot seven, that's the one we're on today, is usually recognized by the type as a weakness that can be worked on, albeit reluctantly. Degree of reluctance, reluctance varies by type, e.g. FE DOMs keener to work on T than SE DOMs to work on NE. That's because the FE DOM might work on TE for FE reasons. So it's like, oh, right, we're at work. We've got to get our business headies on. Business heads, especially for ESFJ, it's the responsible thing to do to get into the, T, get into the TE mode. Whereas an FI DOM might be less likely to get its TI head on unless there's a synergy there with the FI. Sometimes you can get that in philosophy. So, for example, on my channel, I've got a couple of INFP resemblers for you. So, FI and X. So, uh, Hannah. Uh, um, Hannah R. Because there's been another Hannah on the channel. Uh, the Finnish Hannah. And um, Monica. The Czech Monica. Both study philosophy. And so there you could say they use some role TI. But they're mainly sort of like their, their emphases in why they studied it seem to be more from an idealistic, idealist point of view. Um, they weren't studying like, say, Amanda, uh, INTP resembler on the channel, like interested in Wittgenstein. Um, She managed to convince me that Wittgenstein ISTP. Yeah. Anyhow, for certain narrow uses, the merits of this function can be seen by the type, even though it runs counter to the dominant function. Right. At that, I would say, so I've got that in bold for a reason. For certain narrow uses, the merits of this function can be seen by the type, even though it runs counter to the dominant function. So INTJ being a negativist, being a bit of the critic, like Kerr Avon in Blake 7, we'll get around to him. It's going to see the the value of um, stabilizer. Um, so, we're continuing on from there, but that counter can sometimes be a useful counterpoint to the excesses of the lead function. It represents the other side of the mindset of the type, e.g., the mindset of TI and X INTP is called balanced stable in humanitarian socionics school of humanitarian socionics is introverted and rational. T and FI are both introverted rational functions, so by definition, only T and FI DOMs can have the BS mindset. Um, in my humble opinion, a type prefers to stay in its mindset and so switches to and fro between its valued and unvalued mindset function. Enneagram 6, then we'll switch between da -da -da -da, the author of this. Da -da -da -da. Okay, we, that's more, we're here for NI and SI. So, INTJ is also a negativist, a critic, and so I can see the SI being useful in terms of, okay, let's just play it safe, stabilize the situation, go with what works, rather than the INTJ. Again, because they are, they are like Kersey had the INTJ is predisposed to the arranger role, seeing how things can go wrong, contingency planning. So, and that lines up with Victor Galenka's idea of NI minus, minimizing the negative uh, with NI for the ILI, the NI, the NIT. Right, so that's sort of explained that, that slot. And yes, it's a, a default row function. And then something about Dario. Uh, and then I, this is building on what he wrote in eight keys didn't write this but it's consistent with it 
Introverts are comfortable doing many introverted activities and then all right. Dario's got clearer in style as he's gone along. Like eight keys was written in 2005. It was sort of like a business audience, a bit jargony. So let's get back to there. Right, okay. So this is to show how normally the uh, the knit is sort of against the guardian kind of SI instinct. So here, to the INTJ, order is never arbitrary, set in concrete, but can be improved. Thus, authority based on degrees, credentials, title, or celebrity does not impress them, nor do slogans or catchwords. You see there, whereas the guardians are impressed by authority based on degrees and credentials and titles because they think this person is, is credentialed. It's like, and there's that bit of people, like, so for example, Jonathan is going to be credentialed by Catherine Favre. And it's going to be like after about five years of study. So it's like, okay, that credential means something. It's not just paying your pass, like a lot of courses out there. <coughs> NLP. Um, and I adopt ideas only if they're useful. That's the T. So you can see that it goes. So their temperament is against, and also with the SE polo, the SE Achilles heel, they don't sort of go with sort of like the zeitgeist or what everyone else wants to do or the way it should then the most anti of the nt is against all oh, you should do it like this and they're like they're the most likely to be like what why should i and don't want to do the opposite so a bit here in that this goes against the si that want their children to be independent independent of action and attitude Whereas SI would be more protective and want the children to sort of like do things the right way. So that's where it really is opposite. The NI with the SI, especially within the context of uh, the rational temperament. So now let's go over. So Victor's definition of SI, this is going to go over. But look, there's a bit of instinct in there. Responsible for the practical need of bodily needs. Rest, nourishment, clothes, shut. So bodily needs, we're getting towards instinct, towards self-preservation. So we can go through these. So this focuses on, like many socionics definitions, they are narrow. And this, so this is like the comfort sensing subfunction of SI in my system. So let's have a look at the definition that they're using. So this, the SI minus works for ISFJ. Treatment of a malady or resolution of everyday discomforts. Right, so like Kersey has ISFJ being good as a nurse, doctor, general practitioner. This one, adjusting to the environment to make yourself as comfortable as you can, make your territory autonomous, mm, a little bit. So, so let's uh, see what I think of this. Over time, ILIs work out specific routines and habits to help them stay comfortable and healthy. Right, so that's interesting. But he's got the routines and habits in there as part of SI, but maybe he only puts that in SI minus. Because like that might be in there because like process type. There's a tendency to surround themselves with collections of favorite things and stop up on favorite food. Uh, collections of favorite things, that gets a bit towards like the MTI definition of SI. Uh, when going out of the house or on the trip, they take on certain minimum supply of things to ensure they were comfortable traveling. Comfortable, 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 comfortable. That word will keep coming up. Try to keep things tidy and follow accepted accepted practices of self-care. They don't... INTJ does not care about accepted practices. Um, INTJ will do what it thinks is right. Hand washing sometimes give me away. However, they might get untidy when stressed or when being tidy takes too much effort or there's no, like, payoff to it. So they'll be tidy in pursuit of organization. They're not going to be uber tidy. Um, but if it's a complete mess around them, that would impinge on their efficiency. 
So it's judging by the criterion of efficiency. Have a great appreciation for comfortable shoes. Um, maybe. Um, right, what else? Yeah, that's the one we're doing today. That's going to be the thumbnail. Is there anything else? Is that it? That's it. That is it. <laughs> 19 minutes, that is it. There's not much I can add to that. Yeah. Um, let's go back to that. In general, again, because it's the it's the opposite, it's the contrarian to the dominant INTJ mindset. Now, let me speculate about which bits are going to be repressed more than others. I think this bit about like doing things in the same old way is going to be repressed a lot. Um, I think that the imaginative side will increase because that's not going to be as repressed as much. I can see that improving and I can see the harm. I can see the comfort sensing stuff uh, improving in terms of INTJ doing the right amount of SI stuff not going overboard um yeah but this assertive kind of like the the core part of si does run counter to the ni but as i said again they do want to minimize risk so part of that will come in so that's my overall thoughts on uh, that function i think that's it that's it pretty short one today greetings uh, in case it doesn't start recording straight away i'll say like comment subscribe all that switch notifications on if you want notifications um so we're going to be doing the weakest function in intj effie uh some phrases for this um Sometimes, not with everyone, you can get facial paralysis. Also, but I will start here with, I don't know how much it's her comedic persona, Cat Tim. And part of me wondered, is she effied me? <laughs> because, like, that would be odd for an INTJ to do that. But... Uh, perhaps she did like it, but again, it's her on screen persona, Cat Tim, uh, sort of libertarian INTJ persona. But getting back to this, so FE being the weakest function. So if we look here, none doesn't tick any boxes, it's not. Uh, with the nit being an introvert, it's not an introverting function. It's not a club function. It's not part of the NT preference. And it's not valued. It has nothing going for it in that respect. And it's the F, and if you compare FI, it's valued and it's a, a default function. It's an introverting function. Uh, and at least SI is a default function. So, we will now move on. I don't wish to make this too long. Um, right then, so I have to, I wish to read through the correct bits. So, slot five has been done. Uh, disdained. I think that is exclusively about slot seven. Yes. So functions in this column are the least valued. Right then. So there's going to be something here. So yeah, three sort of concepts. Yeah. A way to think about this position, it's sometimes useful to think of it as binary in that in quite a few types, you can actually, it's not like they are completely useless at the function in this position. It's like 
the uh, degree is inappropriate and so you can have say INTP and INFP resemblers who overuse SE or don't use it at all in overreacting or you could say ENFJs and ENTJs that uh, become health nuts because of a previous not sort of caring for that area so it's like again that binary all or nothing on or off uh digital um zero or one um we'll go through a few of the of the others uh, so for intuiting um is that a theme with any uh i'm not so sure i see that in isfp and istp with examples of them going full on any um uh maybe you could see it with estj and esfj with the um like in not knowing how things are developed they rigidly plan into the future and it's the future is like an extrapolation of now without knowing how it's going to change um you know it just and i think part of that is the temperament of wanting things to stay the same because they want to stabilize the situation whereas ni is looking at development uh so we could go through a few others with the because it's explaining the nature of this position of this binary aspect of it um so now for the rational functions te um we've got tamsi sort of running a, a sort of a business related to self-development um te in isfj you might see more of because of the guardian temperament and and just sort of the sense of duty to other people and just and, and especially if it's te that has to do with logistics isfj can be good at that because the si helps them out uh what else so ti yeah you can see examples of uh esfp and enfp where they become distrustful of someone's say theory and they and maybe ironically you would think for someone so weak at ti they're able to point out some flaws in someone's reasoning that's happened with some events with jeff and i thought oh that's a good bit of reasoning there jeff it, it's like so it's like they're able to use ti to find the flaw uh in an argument so that's not all the while but that you can see it as like on or off um now what else so let's sort of like get to the roots of the matter uh what else so uh oh yeah we're going to get to the fe all or nothing and then with the fi so the fi would be like it comes across in the ability to read someone's character and absent any obvious sort of affect display things so uh it's like they either overly trust people or or completely distrusting there's not those finely grained feelings about other people and interpersonal distance so the solution for those two types is to become that character in lie to me i think he's like an estp character um and he's sort of like has become a master of reading the affect display of people and knowing when they're lying uh uh paul ekman advised on the series 
uh and so a lot of the stuff in that series is real real stuff coming from ekman and so now we get to effie effie being used all or nothing um maybe it sort of comes through in intj with showing i think they tend to show more negative emotion than positive emotion and they're not quite comfortable showing positive emotion and when they when an intj resembles smiles it's like blink and you miss it it's like opposite of esfj like when an esfj is not smiling something's wrong and but and intj is like the smell and it's gone almost blink and you miss it um they're not used to smile um so these are themes not also but it is a theme there uh affect display issues and also with the tone of voice that you get with istjs if you look up the character el wisty who's based on a real person istj that flat after effect and if you look at the former prime minister john major istj he's got that sort of like monotonal voice uh so that's something about that position uh then it does tend to be binary uh and again averse to it in other people so intj resembles really averse to effie in other people they just they, they just see it as have a nice day in sincerity kind of stuff and actually the quote from avon um which i'll get on to later speaks to that how they see uh effie so let's read through this um because it might be a bit small in fact i might disappear for a moment so that to make this a touch bigger here we go let's see if that helps dr dario nardi's cognitive processes assessment found at his admission.com showed the inferior function was almost always in the bottom half of the scores functions in slot six and eight are opposite invertness from the default row and are part of the counter club functions their weaknesses are unsurprising think is suggestible okay i've done that for that one that was slot six with Jarvik. Right. Polarity, yes, that's slot that's all slot six. And we're on slot eight. The function in slot eight is the least valued of the lot. It is the Achilles heel of the psyche, the weakest function and the most disliked in others. Can be conflict <coughs> can be conflict with others who resemble a type which has this function as its dominant. Usually the type avoids I'm just gonna have a good cough. Usually the type avoids activities which draw on slot eight, but in some cases it can be binary and an all or nothing lacks lacks showing lack of nuance in intuition of development. Oh, isn't it? Lack uh -huh. lacks appropriate degree. Uh, all or nothing sense. It tends to be totally avoided or used as a blunt instrument, usually without skill, e.g. ESTJ or ESFJ resembler who make rigid plans for the future, showing lack of nuance and intuition development. NI. Um, that bit there is a continuation. Uh, right. So that is enough on that. And then we'll go through the sub functions as well and sort of show how INTJ can be weak there. So awareness of group morality and emotion reading being able to change the feeling state of others via expressivity of one's own feelings well intj doesn't want to do that unless with people who they're properly close to group morality they don't care for that they're, they're very they're the most utilitarian of the nts and probably estp is the most utilitarian of the uh sps but for a different reason. Uh, utilitarian as in doing what it, it's sort of like ends justify the means sort of thing. And not, they don't, or in this case, it's about the 
the INTJ doesn't really care how it should be done or it's sort of neutral when it comes to that. It's like, what is the most effective way? Uh, I said before that the, the TPs are more likely to do it their own way just for the sake of doing it their own way, whereas INTJs more do it just the most efficient way. Um, and if that goes against how it should be done, they don't care because they don't care about the approval of others as in general people that they're not connected to. Only people that they actually care about are those close to them. Uh, and then the ability to change the feeling state of others via expertivity, and then that reduced affect display of INTJ, it's difficult for those people to then, to then do that. Uh, there's a little bit of difference in the polarity of this between male and female INTJs. Um, female INTJs a little bit less uh, FE polar. Uh, assertive, demonstrative dramatic emotions. Yeah, and INTJ really dislikes that in others. Sort of that drama queen sort of thing. Uh, particularly, in, particularly the, the INTJ particularly dislikes ENFJ. Uh, so it's a little bit like Avon and Blake. Rog Blake, ENFJ. And Avon even said, Kurt Avon, Blake is an idealist. He cannot afford to think. He will fight to the last drop of their blood. So he had a fattened, fanatical desire to destroy the Federation, Terran Federation. Creative, performing arts with SE, has ability to artistically orchestrate facial expressivity, body language, and tone of voice to affect such that their face, body, and voice become instruments played by this subfunction. Um, yeah, but it, you get that through being in the moment, though. And I, I actually did some directing this week. Um, yeah, two characters in. Uh, well, it'll be a long time before those scenes because those scenes have to be done in one block before you see them in one housemates. And then group harmony, focus on others. They do not care about harmony. Uh, INTJ, focus on others if the person is important to them. Um, right, what have we got next? Cat Tim. Yeah, again, it might be an, a persona is maybe an extension of her natural personality. Uh, right, and then we actually get quite a lot of FE stuff in this Kersey profile. This is a bit of a build up to it. Uh, in that this tendency of people to feel transparent and even incompetent in their presence often results in working relationships which have some psychological distance. Colleagues may describe INTJs as unemotional. Reduced affect display. Let me get back on screen. Right. Uh, and at times, cold and dispassionate. So it's super consistent with FE break in the socionics ILI. When in truth, they are merely taking the goals of the institution seriously and continue striving to achieve these goals. Fortunately, indifference or indifference or criticism from their fellow workers does not particularly bother masterminds. Exactly. Does not bother them if they believe that they are right. Yeah, with that strong NI conviction. All in all, they make dedicated loyal employees whose loyalties are directed towards the system rather than towards individuals within the system. Right. So let's go and try and find. I've mentioned this bit before about the SE and not wanting a submissive mate. Let's get towards FE stuff. Right. Okay. Right, so we're getting towards here, the purple stuff. Right. Right, that's interesting there about the promise. But generally here, in general, masterminds rely on their head and not their heart to make these choices. And at times, therefore, they will seem cold and calculating. Even in more casual social situations, they may appear cold and may neglect to observe small rituals designed to put others at the ease. So you see, this is completely opposite from ESFJ, which is warm. Uh, for example, INCJs may communicate the time that is wasted if used for idle chit-chat. And thus, people 
receive a sense of hurry up from them which is not always intended but i've i've been in, in an event with a few intj resemblers and it's like there's not it's sort of like going like this but come on uh <laughs> right a sense of hurry up uh for example intj is making me yeah, 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 yeah. make no mistake the emotions of an intj are hard to read reduced affect display and neither male nor female of this type is apt to be very outgoing or emotionally expressive on the contrary they have a strong need for privacy and they do not enjoy physical content except with the chosen few so then for the socionics people out there who don't think this pro this profile is like socionics i lie i say read it carefully use your brain you know, this is obviously FE break. And this profile is very TE valuing. Every idea is subjected to the test of usefulness. This is Kurt Avon. I'll try and do the voice. I've never understood why it should be necessary to become irrational in order to prove that you care. No, indeed. Why it should be necessary to prove it at all. Now, the build up to that was... How can you go at a time like this? What do you mean? A time Blake's sat up in another tree. Travis is sat up in that tree over there. Unless they're going to throw nuts at each other, I don't think they're going to, much of a fight is going to break out before dawn. You never cared much for anyone, have you, Avon? Except for yourself. You're never involved, are you? And then that's the comeback. I've never understood why it should be necessary to become irrational. So to him, showing emotion is becoming irrational. It's a complete opposite point of view from ESFJ, which is like showing the warmth and reciprocating the warmth. Right, so allies are prone to criticize Nag, which often ruins the atmosphere and or their own mood. Again, poor masters of their emotions may fluctuate randomly from calm to melancholy to aggressive distance. So that, that fits in with the idea of it being binary, lack of control. Uh, facial expressions or intonation may be somewhat inadequate, which is most noticeable during public speaking. Okay, now do you notice how that is like the same as the Kersey profile? They're describing describing the same kind of person. Uh, which is most now given that David West Kersey's son, David Mark Kersey, got a uh, 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 a PhD in sort of like. Uh, natural language processing and like, and he ended up working for DARPA and I saw he would have been around a lot of INTJ resemblers. Um, right. So, you know, they, they knew of them. They had experience of them. Finding internal balance is an important problem for them. Therefore, once they achieve a calm and relaxed state, our allies really dislike being disturbed. But yeah, so that lack of control, the binary, aspect because we really do it as ethics of emotions a function that shapes demonstrative and expressive behavior what was that about nor emotionally expressive their emotions are hard to read an unpleasant incident gets stuck in their mind and they can't calm down as their thoughts go back to it involuntarily yeah, so let's go here. And that's the Blake 7 line again. Uh, again, but it's worse than expressing it. I think, yes, they can express, like, the... So, in a way, they are poker face. In a way. But you could also say that they have the ability, maybe sometimes, not be able to hide their emotions or know when they should hide it and then negativity can come out and the attitude and that spoil the atmosphere and other or the or the people. Uh, this is a feature of the function in this position. Text frequently refers to the weakness of its flip side. Yeah. Um and then we're gonna have being angry, indignant, dramatizing events, ridiculing others, escalating conflicts emotionally. That's the way yeah well I don't think all of them on a bad day. And then He's got a really positive view of ESFJ, Victor's NTP, uh, LII. Being happy, expressing enthusiasm, being friendly and open with people, that's the way ESFJ is. So it's like, 
it's not like all the while with uh, ENFJ. Right then. So, uh, again, that's where we are. In fact, maybe I, what I should have done, I didn't even need that there. I should have deleted that one and just had this one in there. Is that it? I've reached the end. I've reached the end. That's the end of this series. No more events in this series. Well, if you like this this video series, please show it around. Now, what I might be doing next is ESFJ, eight videos with some guests, and where this will actually be written out based on the long profile that I've written, like 13 pages of double-spaced A4 text. And so I'm able to boil that down and sort of do eight separate videos uh, on that. Right then, so I'm going to stop now. Toodle pip.